Since the purge of Palestinian civilians during the founding of Israel left a lot of empty Arab-owned housing across the country, owned by a lot of refugees who were never to return. The 1948 Absentees Property Law allowed the state to seize those homes to redistribute to incoming Jews. Yesterday, the Israeli Supreme Court has ruled that the law can be applied to occupied East Jerusalem, allowing the Israeli government to seize the property of Palestinian owners if they live in the occupied West Bank. The judges on the panel urged the law to be rarely used, but said there could be situations where the homes of Arabs could be seized outright if they live in Judea or Samaria with the approval of the Attorney General. Rights groups complain that the law is overbroad and selectively enforced to benefit far-right factions. They noted that in the wake of the Six Days War, a number of West Jerusalem homes were seized from Palestinians who had not actually moved simply because the boundaries of the city were redrawn and they were suddenly ruled to live outside of the city. In theory, they warned the government could just as easily apply this law to Israeli military conscripts, shipping them off to occupied territories and then seizing their homes on the grounds that they are abroad. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expressCoin.fppradio.com. UPI reports a Japanese train line that uses magnetic charge to lift and move train cars broke a previous speed record on Thursday. The Magnetic Levitation Bullet Train, or Maglev, operated by Central Japan Railway Company, reached 590 km per hour. Its speed surpassed a previous record of 581 km per hour set in December 2003 by the same firm. Kyoto News reported the seven-car Maglev train ran at the world's highest speed for 19 seconds seconds using new LO series cars on a track between Yunahara and Fuafuki in Yamanashi Prefecture just west of Tokyo. The new record, however, may be beaten next week when another test ride may see the train run as fast as 600 kilometers per hour. Passengers on Japan's train system, however, are not likely to experience the lightning test speeds even after 2027 when the maglev train lines are slated to open to the public. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is expected to promote Japan's train technology during his visit to the United States, which will begin April 26th. Abe is scheduled to stop in California, a state with strong ties to the Asia-Pacific region that is planning a high-speed rail line modeled after similar lines in Japan and Europe. On Tuesday, U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said Washington is working overtime ahead of Abe's visit. A South Korean newspaper reported Blinken said he is looking forward to reaching an agreement on the Trans-Pacific Partnership with Japanese officials and on revisions to the U.S.-Japan Defense Cooperation Guidelines. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports President Barack Obama said on Friday a bill allowing Congress to review a deal concerning Iran's nuclear program was a reasonable compromise he planned to sign, and he expressed confidence that it would not derail talks with Tehran. Obama told a White House news conference that Senate Foreign Relations Committee Chairman Senator Bob Corker and the panel's leading Democrat Ben Cardin had agreed that they would protect the bill from poison pill amendments that would be tilted towards trying to kill an agreement with Iran. After initially a Opposing congressional intervention, Obama conceded that lawmakers would have the power to review an agreement with Iran after Republicans and Democrats crafted a rare compromise measure. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. 
in what medical authorities are calling one of the worst ointment complications in White Plains Hospital's history. Area girlfriend Caroline Nagler was rushed to the ER this week after suffering an extreme overdose of scented lotion. With a blood lotion level of 0.45, hospital sources confirmed that Nagler had rubbed onto her body four times the lethal limit of shea butter, green tea cleanses, and naturally soothing mineral therapies. Even putting aside the sheer level of lotion Ms. Nagler had on her person when she arrived at the ER, this was an especially lethal combination she was using. She was mixing scented moisturizers, age-defying serums, and even some harder stuff like jojoba and essential fruit extracts. Frankly, she's lucky to be alive. In other news, Beijing's air solidifies. A Delta Airlines counteragent assures a man he will never see his family again. And a mannequin must think he's some pretty hot they say if you love something, let it go. But how could we possibly leave you behind after being blessed with a relationship as unique and complex as this one? For more, keep checking TheOnion.com. This is The Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We invite you here to dial in toll-free on this live Saturday edition of the program. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And don't forget, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian and Mark. And let's jump right into your calls and thoughts. Uh, when we get a chance, there's a, another TSA agent who is speaking out against the agency we will talk about that here in a moment but first let's go to eric who's in valdosta georgia eric you're on free talk hi. live with the and mark hi hey there you're on the air yeah. yes um yeah i wanted to talk about a story that happened yesterday here at the in valdosta state university i think it's got some national coverage and well at least the blaze has picked it up where some demonstrators were Stepping on a flag, and and a Air Force veteran had taken it, and the, and of course, and then the one, the, and of course, the, she was then made to the cops then detained her and, and made him give back the flag, and the regents then banned her from the college from coming back, and now many people are upset about it, and, and many of the, of course, the students are even talking about just transferring out of the school because of that. Now let me so let see me, if I can. Yeah, let me let me make sure I understand. So there were some students participating participating in flag trampling, and an a yes. Air Force veteran came along and uh, took said doormat away from them. And then mm -hmm. they, uh, at some point, the the police arrived, probably campus police, and uh, told her that uh, right. she needs to give the flag back to the flag tramplers. Does that sound right? Yeah. And an uh, important right. question is, whose flag was it? It was theirs. It okay. was their it was their private property. Right. Okay. Um, so it sounds like uh, the right thing was done here. The people whose private property yeah. was stolen was returned to them by the police. Uh, you know, the police did the right thing here. You know, I have uh, had jobs where I go around door to door um, talking to folks. And uh, as a matter of fact, part of, the, part of the job being a firefighter, I've had to uh, go to people's houses. And I thought it was very interesting. I saw one of these sort of uh, wicker flag mats, uh, mats re made recently to look like an American flag. It had, <laughs> it had an American flag in the mat. So you wiped your feet on the right, flag right. as you walked in the door <laughs> and this was a, a house of people who were quite patriotic oh they didn't even realize what they'd done huh? they, they didn't really get it yeah <laughs> eric what do you think um yeah i definitely do say that it, the right thing was done and i think it's it's really ridiculous and sad that people are getting this emotional about it and wanting to you know of course in, wanting to just transfer to a different school because of this yeah. So what are, I mean, so you were hearing things uh, like on talk radio down south. I mean, is this a big? This is a big story. It's the first well, I've heard of it. Well, well, I um, well, of course, I, well, I lived here in Valdosta, and I had actually just talked to some of them, the, the demonstrators, after the fact, I, mm -hmm. and I just heard about this said event maybe an hour or so later, um, which I can say uh, their the, the their protest was. I would say the, the right word for it is um, they were very, I could say, Afrocentric, as in they're you know they're all black and they're based and they're talking a lot about uh, white supremacy, white uh, priv uh, white privilege, mm -hmm. and that type of thing, which well, that's kind of irrelevant whether or not they have the right to stamp on the flag or whatever. But 
Well, what they um, think they're going to do is get attention for their uh, event, whatever it might did. be. And they did get attention. And at this point, flag flag oh. burning, flag trampling, these sorts seem to be the, the, the pinnacle of unpopular speech, right? Like people want right. to, uh, you know, they when it comes to free speech, they're like, yeah, free speech and everything, but whoa, not Don't flag burning. Yeah, not flag burning. Because it's special, lots yeah. of people have died for it, or you know, you know whatever the the claim is. I would claim that uh, people who've died for the country or whatever have died for freedom of speech. So therefore, they died for the right of people who might be misinformed on a topic to burn a flag in order to get attention for their uh, you know particular bend on the issue. Yeah, I certainly don't necessarily agree with whatever it was that they were protesting uh, by doing that, but I certainly support their right. To do with their property as they well, please. I, yeah. Well, I should clarify, I guess, a little bit. They were talking about some stuff about 9-11 and the Act of 1871, some sovereign citizen stuff. But my main thing was, I guess, they were just equating that to, as just those issues as just quote white privilege issues. But Eric, thanks for bringing that to the uh, forefront tonight. Okay. Appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Yeah, maybe you can convince me that for some reason I'm wrong, that people should um, should be able to burn the flag if that's what they want to do, or trample upon it if, in, order, in order to get their point across, whatever so that might be. you're saying there might be somebody out there who uh, who would like to stop the uh, the flag burning? There's the not tramplings. just somebody. There are hundreds of people listening to my voice yeah. right now that think that, yes, freedom of speech is f- fine and good and all, but not not flag burning. Like, it stops there. Well, you can't there. have it both ways. I mean, you, you have to allow for speech that you don't like. And symbolism is speech. You know, burning a flag, it's not speaking, but not everybody who, uh, who can't speak should, you know, if, it's, if you're mute, for instance, you should still be able to express yourself right. in other ways. It's more of a freedom of expression uh, than specifically being able to speak words. Right. Now, I would say that it's a really terrible way to get your message across, whatever your message might be, because sure. people be get, get thrown into this sort of, uh, you know, this emotional whirlwind, and oh, they're yeah. not listening to the things that you say. No, they're just mad. They're seeing red. They want to uh, destroy the people who have destroyed the flag. The best way to get your message across is with respect and empathy over time. But many people feel, you know, they're, they're just enraged by whatever the issue is. And sure. I'm, en- I'm enraged by all kinds of issues out there, too. There's no doubt about it. Um, but I mean, it's it's got to be difficult dealing with institutionalized racism, which certainly a lot of people of the uh, the black or Hispanic variety uh, certainly have to deal with. And I can't empathize with that being uh, being a white guy. I mean, I can do my best. Uh, but I don't still can't really know what that's like, and it, it can't be easy. Yeah, well, I mean, and on the other side of the issue, you just sort of wonder, um, you know, I mean, are people being stopped in their progress in life because they're looking at whatever the uh, the difficulties are that they might have as a, um, you know, as for, because of their race? So, I mean, are do do some people? just not achieve as high as they could because they they see this blockade that uh, sort of is centered around race and they say I can't get over that there's too many problems and make the make the hurdle higher than it is yeah to certainly give up uh, on one's possibilities or opportunities is not going to get you to wherever it is you want to go but that doesn't mean there aren't being roadblocks put down by the man so to speak sure. and, and we certainly have seen evidence of that over the years James is in Kalamazoo Michigan you're on free talk live hey James uh, hello. Um, I wanted to uh, speak about something that in the past I know has been controversial. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I had a personal experience with it today, and I just kind of wanted to know um, what your guys' thoughts were about this particular uh, particular issue. Okay, what is it? Um, I uh, I stepped into um, into a public restroom today to turn and. Um, see what appeared to be a very shapely female individual. And then you checked the and, door to make sure you were in the oh proper yeah, room? Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I was definitely in the proper room. Okay. And I'm like, uh, this is the men's bathroom, isn't it? And as soon as she spoke up, I realized that it was a transgender person. This is a very shapely woman who actually there might be some debate about, d- debatability as to whether or not uh, she's a she, right? Right. I, I, I've heard about issues in the past where they have debated whether or not a transgender person um, is allowed to go in uh, into which bathroom. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the only reason I, I bring this up is because I think it was determined where I live that until you, essentially you're 
genitals get changed, you're stuck going into the bathroom of your, I guess, prior gender. Yep. Yeah, I would say that's the case. Is I'm just curious, is it a law to, you know, are you breaking a law or just social code, social sort of stricture um, by going into the opposite bathroom? I mean, if somebody... Well, it, hmm? Go ahead. I'll, I'll tell you, I, I was shocked, and, and uh, you know, I, I was pretty speechless. And when, when I realized it was a transgender person, I caught them on, on the way out, and I, I apologize. I don't know what my opinion is on this because... You know, obviously, I you, when you walk in and you view somebody that appears to be, you know, essentially the perfect hourglass shape and everything, you know, long hair, has a bust, yeah. has, you know... A That's a bit of a surprise, ball, you know. right? There's an attractive <laughs> yeah. woman. Wait a second. <laughs> well, I want to talk about... I think it's an interesting topic. We can certainly talk about the uh, TSA agent here in a little bit. That's still on a deck, 855 free. but we'll take your calls about whatever's on your mind because, you know, honestly, I think you're just more interesting than we are. 855 free. You can join us here on Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't Tread on Meme, M-E-M-E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value, and they look neat too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't Tread on Meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at DontTreadOnMeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't Tread on Meme, your path to a voluntary society with honest money. DontTreadOnMeme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. 
Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. And you can grab gold and silver as much as you like over at silver.freetalklive.com or gold.freetalklive.com. Either one will get you there from Midas Resources. They've got some great hand picked gold and silver pieces. And they're always updating their inventory with uh, new and interesting stuff over at Midas. Go and check it out at silver.freetalklive.com or call them toll free whether you are invested in or you're interested in investing in gold and silver as a hedge against inflation, investment, or a barter currency, they can help you out over at Midas Resources. Toll free, 877-857-9938. That's 877-857-9938. Or go to silver.freetalklive.com as we go back to your calls and thoughts. Uh, Coming up, a TSA agent speaks out, but right now James is back with us in Kalamazoo. So, James, just to recap here, you were in a bathroom, or you you went into a bathroom, public bathroom, uh, and then you encountered what you thought was a, a woman by based on the, the shape of the person's body. Uh, but on closer uh, examination, you noticed that this person was perhaps uh, packing a little something between uh, her legs. And so it led to a discussion about, you know, what is an appropriate place for people to use the restroom? For me, it doesn't really bother me. I don't really mind the idea of co-ed bathrooms. That's, I think that's an interesting concept. I uh, but I understand the arguments against it. That is that the theory is that if there are, the sexes are mixed, that there will be harassment of one or the other. I think harassment would be the uh, the you know the best you could hope for. Uh, let's uh, let's continue, James. Go ahead with your thoughts. Well, uh, you know, I I know when when I've heard the discussion before, when when it was actually in the media and they were talking about it, um, the the biggest uh, throwback, I guess you could. say, Say would be from the women that essentially thought that these are just guys in their bathrooms that might be peeping on them. Mm. And uh, you know, for, for me, you know, I, as far as I'm concerned, you know, um, th- th- this individual is choosing to become a woman, and whether or not they've had the surgery yet um, to fully make that happen or not is irrelevant. They, they already, you know, this individual already used. Uh, herself, and I say herself because you know it's this individual's choice. You know that they are a woman. Well, right, so, and that presumes you know, that uh, that the person who is in there is not there for the purposes of just throwing on a wig to be a creep. Yeah. Uh, in the bathroom. I right? think this has to, in most cases, come down to sort of private property issues. So if there's, uh, you know, some ladies come to me in my business and say, "Hey, there's a man hanging out in the uh, bathroom with a funny w- with you a wig, out. sort of askew, uh, and a uh, you know an ill-fitting dress and a little bit of uh, lipstick smeared across his uh, mouth, um, le- lecherously looking at people." Then I'm going to have to go remove oh, that yeah. individual from the bathroom. But, but at this point, this, if you're talking about somebody who's person, convincing, then if they're oh, convincing, they're, you never they're know. Uh, until until she spoke, I thought it was a woman, right? Hmm. And actually, a very attractive woman. And then she, you know, you know, spoke, Surprised and you. I heard, you know, of, of course, that that maleness in the voice. I'm like, oh, this is a transgender individual. Well, I think this does come down to what Mark said that this is just private property, right? Is there a law preventing, you know, in theory? Uh, punishing, if you will, if these people get caught, punishing a man from going into a woman's bathroom and vice versa. I, I've never heard of it, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Thanks, James, for bringing that up tonight. Appreciate it. Toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Jennifer in Virginia. Jennifer, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Jennifer. Hi, I'm just calling because I, I I just can't believe what my ears are hearing on your program. What that part? Essentially, we're advocating for for transgender people to be able to, whether they've had the surgery or not, really makes no difference to me, but that that a, that a man, a biological man, is able to go into a woman's bathroom or vice versa. And you asked something to the previous caller about whether this was against some just some sort of social code or was it a, a legal issue. And my argument to you would be, I don't know if you have children, but I, I mean, have a child. my five-year-old daughter is in the bathroom. And a, and a man walks in, 
to the women's bathroom, I mean, that that's something that would really bother me. Do you I think mean, it's it less likely that a female will molest a child? I don't know, but I'll tell you, I don't think I want someone who's confused about their sexuality in in the bathroom with my child. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, that's your not. determination. That's your belief that they're confused. To them, it's crystal clear. To them, it's well, uh, no, it's no, so no. clear. I don't, I don't think so because, because I, and, and again, I love how this word belief is thrown around. <laughs> I don't believe that they're a man and, and, they're, and, and in their mind they're a woman. But let's take, for example... A person, you know, there is a there's a mental disorder out there that people believe that they should be an amputee. Are you aware of this? A what? A what? Yeah, I'm sorry. They should be what? An amputee. Uh, like oh, they, oh. They, they, feel, they feel very strongly that they're missing a leg, but they really have two legs. And they, they really, really, truly believe in their minds. Just as convincingly You're talking about as phantom a, as limb a, syndrome? Talking, yeah, phantom limb syndrome. So they yeah. are an amputee no. and they feel the... Uh, the... No. No, 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 no. I'm talking about a person who has four working limbs, uh-huh. but truly believes that they are missing a limb. They That's new. I've not like heard that. No, I believe those that. people could exist because there's all I kinds believe of the human mind is uh, is capable of all kinds of uh, You're data breaches. Right. Sure. But the, but the medical community's response to that particular individual is not, hey, you know what, then I think we should cut off your left leg because you feel like you don't have you a left leg. You can find a doctor that will really cut your leg off for you. I'm sure you could, but, I mean, what does that really say about then the transgender argument that, I mean, you can find a doctor to abort a seven-pound baby, too, but I don't Agreed. think we really want we well, to pin a metal star on those folks. So, I'm of the opinion you should be able to do whatever you want with your body. I think that you own it, so therefore you get to decide what you want to do with it. And that goes that's also— not really what the question is here. What the question is here is whether a person who's not sure or—, or they're crystal clear, but society, you could argue, is confused about about who exactly they are, man or woman, should be able to use the opposite restroom. And that's when their rights begin to cross into ours and well, mine. Well, the right example, here is private daughter. property. So, right. so uh, let me ask you this. If I have a yes, business— And when they're at home, if they want to dress like a woman yeah. and act like a woman, then that's fine. But what we're talking about is bringing that into the public sphere. Well, I don't know about the public because there's, right there's different here. kinds of bathrooms out there, and we don't really distinguish um, them. So if I have a business, and we've talked about my imaginary business and my imaginary bathroom and my imaginary business. In my imaginary business's imaginary bathroom, may I let— uh, transgendered people go into the bathroom that they prefer to go into, and you that's how I. But you're, not talk, but you're not talking just about you. You're talking about. I, I asked question, you a specific question, question and you've was, dodged it. Whether, Can you answer against, my question? Was, was whether it was against social code? Right, but I'm asking and you a question now. Right, we're having a conversation now. Thank you for thank you, Jennifer, for your comments about our earlier comments. Now we're having a conversation in this moment, and Mark asked you a question. Can I set up I'm my sure, business the I'm way sure I want? With your business, you can certainly set it up any okay, way great. you want. But what I'm ta- but I mean, we do have certain. Clearly, we have rules yep. about what businesses can do, even as private businesses. I mean, for example, we have had recent cases where you you can't discriminate against a person for being black or for being their whatever religion they are, because I mean, you have to you have to have an equal opportunity job system. Well, so, uh, okay, I, I've got system, that, but now we're moving fluidly between about, what's about right religious. and what's legal. I'm just finishing answering your question, and I think you asked me to answer your question, so I'm just continuing my answer. And I would argue also that the recent religious freedom uh, debate that occurred in Indiana points exactly to what you're talking about. I would agree and with you. Apparently, you cannot yep. do I think exactly as a religious you person, want, you so. should be able to let anybody in the bathroom you want. Hang Sorry, on. the breaks. It's over. 855. Well, hold on. 855, 450 free. I've got more questions for Jennifer. It's Free Talk Live. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional installation. 
installation. You control what you watch when you watch it. Record your favorite shows, pause and rewind live TV, even skip the commercials. Watch local channels too. At just $19.99, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card. Call 1-855-905-MYTV. 1-855-905-MYTV. Say goodbye to the cable guy. Cut costs and get more. 1-855-905-MYTV. 1-855-905-MYTV. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live, and of course you can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that we wait. Uh, we have waiting for you there. Uh, once again, freetalklive.com. You can also enjoy some delicious wine, as Mark, you and I will be doing shortly after the show ends tonight. Yeah, we're having another wine tasting, uh, courtesy of Cameron Hughes at chwine.com. Uh, what uh, Cameron does is he goes to the the best wineries around the world and throughout uh, Napa Valley, California. He specializes in Napa Valley, but, um, you know, he certainly has wineries around the world. And what he does is he takes their overage. Anybody who produces anything is going to have sort of extras. And that's also true with people who make high-end wines. These wines are 90 points and above. These are the best wines. They're going to be bottles between 70 and on up to $140 a bottle. And uh, you can get them at extreme discounts. Cameron Hughes sells his bottles of wine from between uh, 12 and $30. And actually, right now, he's got a special um, that's only available 
through the radio, and it's uh, on lot 439. When We had some of this. It's a, a Cabernet Sauvignon, and it is fantastic. It's going to be good with red meats. Uh, you know, you can have it with a hamburger. You can have it with a uh, ribeye, whatever you prefer to do. The proof is in the bottle on this one, and it's 20% off for this week only. So you can get this amazing Cabernet Sauvignon for 20% off if you go to chwine.com. We've done great for him, by the way, on this, uh, so people are really loving it. chwine.com. There's a microphone in the upper left. You click that. You enter our coupon code. It's FTL, as in Free Talk Live, and you'll get the 20% off on this great wine that would be probably $130 if you were to buy it in the store and knew where it uh, exactly where it came from, and you'll get it for 20 bucks. It'd be 20% off, and it's a, it's a great deal. So chwine.com, coupon code FTL. You click on the microphone in the upper left, and you put that in. And uh, you'll also get free shipping to boot. So it's a really awesome deal, chwine.com. All right, let's go back to Jennifer in Chesapeake. Jennifer, you're back on Free Talk Live. You're expressing some concern over the idea that uh, that transgendered people might be able to use a bathroom of their choice rather than of their birth, if you will, based on you know the genitals that are hanging between or not hanging uh, between their legs. And this bothers you. Is it because that uh, you feel as though this will increase the amount of transgendered people who are already uh, using the bathroom of their choice? Yeah, I just I just don't really see why it's why it's a necessary concession for, for us to make. Well, how big of a concession is it to make to just mind your own business in the bathroom? I mean, you would have to, if somebody, if there's a, a person who was born as a man who puts on a wig or grows his hair out and uh, has taken, what is it, the uh, estrogen for growing breasts? I don't know. I don't do, do All research. All I know is if this. somebody cuts their penis off, they're really dedicated to what they believe. Well, whether the penis has been cut off yet or not is, I don't think, the uh, the, the issue at, at hand here. The question is, if this person has done themselves up to look female and they walk into the bathroom, I mean, how close are you really studying people that are, that are coming into the bathroom? And should there be some sort of bathroom patrol that determines whether or not someone is able to go into said bathroom? I mean, for the most part, people go into the bathroom they do number one or two, and then they wash their, wash up and they leave. Yeah, well, I think that uh, should be where the law is. Wash your hands, you <laughs> dirty, dirty people. Yeah. So, I mean, what do you really? I mean, what, what? How could you realistically even control who goes into the bathroom unless you do have a situation where somebody's standing in there and lurking in a corner, uh, furtively playing with themselves or uh, leering at people? And in in which case, would it really matter if that person is a male or a female? It's because I think it's really part of a much, much, much larger sexual moral issue. And so it's not its not just this one isolated incident or this one person that we're talking about that the gentleman encountered today. It's, it's, the, it's the whole issue that our society is dealing with. What's immoral like about this, uh, what's immoral about making a choice for your own life? I mean, these people believe that they are a gender that is different from the genitalia they were born with. I mean, what's immoral about making a choice like that? Because I, I just don't, I don't, I don't think you get it. So I Please like help me understand. That's why I've hung you through the break. That's why we're, we're here talking to you about this. What is immoral? Right. What is wrong with someone making a decision like that about their life and their own body? Because I just I don't I don't really think that's up to the individual. Just like I was talking about before, we wouldn't huh? cut off someone's leg just because they're. Who's it up to? I mean, who who I want to be? Web. That's not up to me. What are you I, talking about? I absolutely do think that it's that it's up to us as a society to. I mean, just like the government makes, takes a village to decide what your sets, gender is. Regulations, no, that's regulations <laughs> for various medical issues. I think it, I think I think it's absolutely up to us to. To say no to certain things, and I think this to is one say of those. No, meaning you would tell somebody, no you would dare tell someone who believes something about their own life, their own body, their own person. Uh, you would dare tell that person that that's not true, and that shame on you, and I, you should you should I, you know go I wear would. some blue as a boy or wear some pink as a girl and fit them into those gender roles. I absolutely would. Yeah, do you also think women would. should stay in the kitchen too? No, I don't. I'm, I'm okay. Actually, how progressive I, of you? Wonderful, wonderful career. So, no, I, I don't think my dad, my husband's actually a stay-at-home dad. And would you call? Um, no, I, I don't. Would I don't you call yourself socially conservative? I, absolutely. Okay. Yes, I would. Do you think that you're on the wrong side historically on this issue? Do you think that you're going to lose out over time? Over time? 
No, no, I don't. Okay. No. I, I, I'm no. going well, to. I'm know, going to make a prediction. Why would she do what she's doing if she thought war, it was po- pointless? The, the war. The war has already been won because the. I mean, the the ultimate is is in heaven, and you know. I, so I I don't think the the small battles that we're fighting here on earth are are not. Do you think that why does God care what bathroom I use? I've gone into the women's <laughs> bathroom before. Uh, like, there's been a line, and like, no, nobody, no ladies are there, and it doesn't seem like it's a problem. Slide in, do you're my business. About like a single make, bathroom, yeah. Like make a sure unit? everything's clean, and then I've depart. Done that too. Yeah. I I honestly think that people who are going through such an issue like this, we should our hearts really should go out to them. Like I I just I think, mine does, and, and the fact that. We're allowing them to do something like this is a very bad commentary. Yep. I'm just imagining society. Jennifer uh, encountering Jesus in her bathroom and, and freaking out about it. Thanks he's for wearing the call a dress. Tonight. Appreciate it. Yeah, and he's like long hair and all those <laughs> artist renderings. God needs you to stop people from going in the wrong bathroom. Let's continue here. You can share your thoughts. We're on the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. Our toll free number eight fifty five four fifty free. Tony is in our very own Keene, New Hampshire. Hello, Tony. Hi, there's a point that I want to make that I think a lot of people haven't caught on to. Um, in a woman's bathroom, 99% of the people that go in there would be actual women. Yep. And we're always talking about the 99%. Well, in this case, you, we want to con- inconvenience 99% of the people that go in that bathroom by having a transgender person go in there. What's the inconvenience? And I... Well, the inconvenience is 99% of the people that go in there are going to feel extremely uncomfortable. So you're going to put the rights of this one individual who feels that they are a woman over the – you're going to put the rights of this 1% or less, maybe one hundredth of 1%, over the other 99%. That means if I'm a woman, I'm in the bathroom, suddenly this person that that I don't feel belongs in there can come in. And the 99 percent, the right of the 99 percent is being in the right of the 1 percent is being enforced by law. You mean your right of not feeling badly? In other words, if you make it if you make it legal for this person to go into the woman's bathroom, then 99 percent of the people that go in the bathroom are going to be inconvenienced. I'm pretty sure it's already legal. So um, I've I've uh, let me let me address what I think exactly. If. It's a private business. The private business gets to decide what the rules are as far as this uh, 1% of people that we're referring to. And I, I suspect it's even less than 1%. Uh, but this 1% of people that we're referring to, I'd say the private business gets to make that decision. Would you agree with me, Tony? Um, if they want to, but then okay. those people I, that but, go to that restaurant, so, if they feel they don't. that they don't Absolutely, like it. Absolutely, Tony. Do not do business with the people that, you don't right. want to do business with. That's your right. Now, I think when it comes to a public exactly. situation, they should. most of these pl- public places have these family bathrooms anyway. They're, they're single stallers. They're kind of big. Mm-hmm. Why doesn't the, the transgender yeah. person can just go in there and then ev- all this problem solved? Tony, so, thanks for your call and the thoughts tonight. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Do you have a right to not feel offended when you're in the bathroom? It's Free Talk Live. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. 
Did you know that drinking pure, high alkaline water is one of the most important factors in maintaining high energy and vibrant health? Most experts agree that the water you drink should be at a pH level of 8 or higher. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops, available only at AlkaVision.com, combine a unique formula of only the most alkaline minerals. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops alkalize your water, ridding the body of harmful toxins, and helps you regain health and energy. Alkalizing your water by simply adding 10 drops of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops helps Helps the body rid itself of acidic waste, increases oxygen content, and raises the pH of your body to healthy levels. And bacteria and viruses cannot survive in an alkaline high pH environment. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH drops for only $29.95 at AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Or call 269-409-1776. 269-409-1776. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com today. Never, ever send a follow-up email asking, did you get my email? Email 101, if it didn't bounce back undeliverable, it got where you sent it. And avoid transmedia pestering, like calling to ask, did you get my email? Or emailing to say, I left you a voicemail. If your emails and voicemails aren't being acknowledged, your problem isn't technology, it's technique. Is your message concise and understandable? Have you boiled it down to seem as relevant as possible to the recipient? In other words, is it the opposite of spam or junk mail? All of this really matters if you're a job seeker. But even if you're not, with money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you dial toll-free here, 855-450-FREE is the number. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, we can talk about the TSA agent speaking out if we get the chance, but somebody called in to talk about being in a bathroom and encountering a transgendered person. Sort of brought up a discussion that we had probably within the last six months. It doesn't seem like it's been that long ago, maybe even within the last four months here on Free Talk Live about transgenders and bathrooms and what should the rules be. And I think I think we've come to the right conclusion here, Mark, that uh, private property is the solution here, meaning that if a private property owner wants to allow, you know, sort of put up a all-gender sign on their bathrooms, they should be free to do that, and you should be free as a customer to go somewhere else if you like. And similarly, uh, other business owners could decide to restrict the bathrooms to the people who they think are appropriate to go in there. And, and again, customers in the marketplace would decide what's best. I think it gets complicated when you start uh, putting up uh, signs and uh, bylaws as to who gets to use the room and doesn't get to, to use the room. Mm -hmm. The uh, the difficulty with uh, not having up a bunch of signs saying who can go where and what. And I agree, this is complicated, and I don't like it being forced upon my life. I don't think it has this, to be that complicated, Mark. I mean, there's well, uh, it's there's... going to be complicated if you send if uh, you know there's th this man told a story uh, that called in about a shapely what appeared to be woman in the man's bathroom and you know like that was complicating for him he mm -hmm. was a, he, he used the term shocked now he 
he quickly recovered and, you know, sort of apologized for any inconvenience that he gave the the woman who was in the ba- men's bathroom or whatever and however we want to call it. I get that this is complicating. It, for me, that's complicating. Um, you may not be complicating for you, Ian. I no. Get, okay, fine. Whatever. You're not complicated. I think Somebody that, has to go number one or two. We all do it. Yeah, I, but I, I can see why people are, you know, a little shocked and a little upset. It's but different. It's the unusual. World, the world, she's a change in, and there's nothing... We can do about it. We can complain or not, um, or or go about our daily business. But it should be a business's job to figure this out. What it, you know, how are we going to yeah. handle this bathroom situation? Maybe they can have a bathroom that says "family" and "sexually confused" or you know, "gender confused." I don't know what the term. Well, I don't can, think those people consider themselves confused. Maybe I don't care. It's your do. business. You can put up whatever yeah. sign you want. Sure. You can say uh, "Satan spawn." on the door, and then tell them they've got to use that one. I don't care. It's not my business. I do believe that you should be able to discriminate in your business against the people that you wish to discriminate against, and that the market should be able to hold you accountable for it. If you want to treat transgenders badly in your business, it's not going to go well. The local newspaper is going to vilify you, and the gay, lesbian, and alliance, or whatever is going to be out picketing your door. Yeah, and you'll deserve it, because you're a jerk. Let's go to the phones and to your thoughts at 855 855- 450 free. Cindy's on the line listening in Virginia to WNIS. Hi, Cindy. Hi, how are you? Hey, this go ahead with your thoughts. I'm calling and I got through. <laughs> it's not that so hard. An, go ahead. Yes, yeah, isn't this wonderful? No, this is an issue I've often thought about, the moral issue with Cy, because people get all up in arms, and I am a school nurse, and we did have a student um, that he did have to use the bathroom in the clinic because guys didn't want him, the girls didn't want him. Wow. But I don't understand when you are trans, say you're male, trans, transgender to female, that why are the women upset? They don't have a thing he wants. If he is dressing up as a female, he wants the guys. Generally, so are good. Yeah, yeah, not it's, necessarily. it's not always that way, but generally that's the case. Yeah. Generally, yeah, or vice versa. So I wouldn't be, you know, if it's some pervert, of course, you know, that just wants to dress up, oh, I'm going to be in the girl's bathroom, that's something different. But um, if it's somebody that truly believes and they're not bi, they're truly trans- transgender, they're really not a threat to the females in there or vice versa to the males. Is how I see it. And the woman that called anyway about her five-year-old child being in there, then she should be the one to protect her five-year-old child. Yeah, absolutely. And especially she's not sending the child in there alone anyway. Well, yeah, um, my son probably went to the bathroom with his uh, mother, um, you know, and and me uh, different times depending on where um, where we were. And this is another sort of issue: is young people, uh, you know, quite young people, tend to you know fluidly move between restrooms. I've seen dads bring their daughters into the uh, uh, men's restroom and. All I am is, you know, delighted that somebody's taking care of their child. Um, it doesn't, you know, bother or upset me. And I'm sure that it looks very similar um, in the ladies' bathroom. I remember once when I was quite young uh, going to a restaurant, and my mother took me to the bathroom the first go-around just to sort of show me where it was. And then the second time I went to the same bathroom, and it was the women's bathroom. And there was a small amount of upset. And then the ladies are like, no, it's okay. Just go use the bathroom. And, you know, I said I'd come here before. Um, and, you know, they're... They didn't have a problem with it. I was probably six or something like that, right, if I can remember exactly. it. And it seems like we're getting all upset. Now, some somebody, some mashers in there leering and, and fiddling with people in the bathroom, we got to do something about right. that. Right. I mean, it wouldn't that's matter. A, that's different. If, that's a pervert. Right. <laughs> and, and if somebody's being a pervert in the bathroom, it's not going to matter or people aren't going to feel better about it if it's a woman being a pervert in the woman's bathroom or a man being a pervert in the woman's You're bathroom. absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Cindy, any so, other thoughts you want to share with us? That was it. Just the moral issue aside. You know, let's look at this logically here. Um, but but I do agree with you. Family thanks. bathroom, if there's any other problems, that's the way to go. All right, Cindy, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Toll-free number here, 855-450-FREE. Joe is in Grand Rapids. Joe, you're on Free Talk Live. Yeah, I think um, you'll probably see a lot more uh, private businesses just going to, like, a unisex one one stall or one toilet bathroom if this becomes a big issue. Yeah, because just close the door. Well, you're going to have, I mean, <laughs> you're going to have, if somebody goes into a bathroom, they're going to be somebody knock them out, you know, a transgender person. Yeah, somebody's going to punch them. Something will happen. Yep, no doubt about it. It's just, I think it's just, uh, and these businesses are opening themselves up for liability because the first time a woman gets touched or a kid gets touched, they're going to get sued. 
So if they just have one toilet, one door with both you know male and female symbols on it, that way only one person can be there at, at a time. In some cases, that's sort of like space inefficient, though. I mean, that's kind of a larger restaurant. Yeah, like if it's a really big place, um, the like a, I'm thinking about a football stadium. You know how they'll have those really big restrooms yeah. in there, and that's kind of what a stall is. I mean, a stall is just a room that doesn't have a you know much going down to the sure. floor. I mean, it's just intended to be easier to mop. Is really the idea. But I mean, I don't. <laughs> I suppose I look for shoes sometime to make sure that uh, you know um, that the stall is occupied. But I'm not. I don't really care whether they're tennis shoes or, or high heels. I just, you know, I think um, they had something like this happen in Michigan at a gym, and you know, if the, if the gym has a policy like that, they should have let people know, and um, they can choose whether or not to go there or not. And and that's, you know, I think people will draw the line at stuff like this. They'll 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 kind of. A lot of people have changed their opinion on gay people and stuff like that, but I think when it comes to this issue of, especially when there's little kids in there and stuff at a public place, they're they get a little crazy. So, well, if kids were coming into the gym bathroom where I where I worked for a couple of years, uh, they were horrified by what they saw anyway. The fact is, old men are walking around with nothing on and uh, getting, you know, getting dressed. That is and, horrifying. <laughs> I mean, Thank you, know, you, Joe, for the call tonight. My favorite is in the morning when these guys would be working out. You know, they're, they're done. They've taken their sauna and everything. They'll be hanging out in the uh, the gym area, in the, uh, the locker room area, completely naked, like leg up on the stool, chit-chatting <laughs> with their buddy. <laughs> you know, like, oh, God, fellas. <laughs> I mean, do we have a, a modicum of decorum here? Something? Thing? Well, I mean, I think that comes back around to... I know that's not happening in the ladies' room. It can't be. I, I think it comes back around to the idea that uh, I think you might be surprised things that happen in the ladies' I have no idea. Rooms. I had to go in there one time and mop something up, but no one was in there. Um, I think it comes back to what that last uh, one of the last callers, uh, a few few calls ago now, actually, said uh, about the idea that, well, 99% of the people going to the bathroom, you know, they could be offended uh, by the 1%. This transgendered person was the idea, the idea, the suggestion being that you have a right to not be offended when you're I'm in the bathroom. I'm not offended. And I'm not offended by the idea of a transgendered person coming in. But further, there are all kinds of things I find offensive about bathrooms. And uh, you don't have a right to not be offended in the United States. If that's the big reason to prevent people from coming in who want to come into a bathroom because they feel like they belong there, uh, then that's a pretty that's a pretty crappy reason, in my opinion. Because, I mean, boy, bathrooms can be a very offensive place. I mean, how many times have you con- gone into a cell, uh, uh, cell, one of these stalls, and just seen somebody urinate all over the uh, the toilet seat, or uh, or you know somebody didn't even You'd hit th- the, the water with the number two. I mean, I, it just. I wish their mothers could see those things. I really do. I mean, <laughs> I've heard it's worse in the women's bathroom with the number twos going everywhere. In I, some, I have no idea cases. what the the you know like having not having spent much time in there, but I have heard people say those things. I don't know the answer, but I mean, you know, agreed. That's offensive, and no one cares about whether I'm offended there. Yeah. No one's proposing ostracization for these folks because there's you know somehow or another we just manage to deal with just it. Life goes on. People alone, if they want to go to the bathroom, let them go in peace. I mean, what does it matter whether they're male or female? But like, obviously, we're a long way away from coming to any resolution on this issue. Of course, you're welcome to share your thoughts here. Toll-free number is 855-453. We've got plenty of time remaining here in the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. Hour 2 is on the way next. 855-453. Or Skype us at Skype username lrn.fm. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. It's the biggest flooring event of the year. Lumber Liquidator's 12th annual April sale with five days of unbelievable clearance deals from 29 cents. Don't miss once-in-a-lifetime prices on solid, pre-finished Bellawood domestic hardwood from an incredible 99 cents. Gorgeous, hand-scraped Supreme Bamboo is just $1.79. Exotic hardwood, laminate, and more is up to 77% off. Plus, more deals added daily in your local store and 24-month special financing for beautiful, high-quality hardwood floors for less. Get to the April sale event today. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. 
change. The technology is created that upends the foundations of society. The wheel, the printing press, the internet. Now, in a world sliding into financial chaos, a new technology is changing the way monetary systems work around the world. It is called Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a new form of money controlled not by banks, governments, or corporations, but through mutual commerce between free individuals. To learn more, visit WeUseCoins.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, April 18th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.27 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,205 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $223. Antiwar.com reports the purge of Palestinian civilians during the founding of Israel left a lot of empty Arab-owned housing across the country, owned by a lot of refugees who were never to return. The 1948 absentees property law allowed the state to seize those homes to redistribute to incoming Jews. Yesterday, the Israeli Supreme Court has ruled that the law can be applied to occupied East Jerusalem, allowing the Israeli government to seize the property of Palestinian owners if they live in the occupied West Bank. The judges on the panel urged the law to be rarely used, but said there could be situations where the homes of Arabs could be seized outright if they live in Judea or Samaria with the approval of the Attorney General. Rights groups complain that the law is overbroad and selectively enforced to benefit far-right factions. They noted that in the wake of the Six Days War, a number of West Jerusalem homes were seized from Palestinians who had not actually moved simply because the boundaries of the city were redrawn and they were suddenly ruled to live outside of the city. In theory, they warned the government could just as easily apply this law to Israeli military conscripts, shipping them off to occupied territories and then seizing their homes on the grounds that they are abroad. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expressCoin.fppradio.com. UPI reports a Japanese train line that uses magnetic charge to lift and move train cars broke a previous speed record on Thursday. The Magnetic Levitation Bullet Train, or Maglev, operated by Central Japan Railway Company, reached 590 kilometers per hour. Its speed surpassed a previous record of 581 kilometers per hour set in December 2003 by the same firm. Kyoto News reported the seven-car Maglev train ran at the world's highest speed for 19 seconds seconds using new LO series cars on a track between Yunahara and Fuafuki in Yamanashi Prefecture just west of Tokyo. The new record, however, may be beaten next week when another test ride may see the train run as fast as 600 kilometers per hour. Passengers on Japan's train system, however, are not likely to experience the lightning test speeds even after 2027 when the maglev train lines are slated to open to the public. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is expected to promote Japan's train technology during his visit to the United States, which will begin April 26th. Abe is scheduled to stop in California, a state with strong ties to the Asia-Pacific region that is planning a high-speed rail line modeled after similar lines in Japan and Europe. On Tuesday, U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said Washington is working overtime ahead of Abe's visit. A South Korean newspaper reported Blinken said he is looking forward to reaching an agreement on the Trans-Pacific Partnership with Japanese officials and on revisions to the U.S.-Japan Defense Cooperation Guidelines. 
For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports President Barack Obama said on Friday a bill allowing Congress to review a deal concerning Iran's nuclear program was a reasonable compromise he planned to sign, and he expressed confidence that it would not derail talks with Tehran. Obama told a White House news conference that Senate Foreign Relations Committee Chairman Senator Bob Corker and the panel's leading Democrat Ben Cardin had agreed that they would protect the bill from poison pill amendments that would be tilted towards trying to kill an agreement with Iran. After initially a Opposing congressional intervention, Obama conceded that lawmakers would have the power to review an agreement with Iran after Republicans and Democrats crafted a rare compromise measure. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Welcome back to the ONN Presidential Democra Kiosk Debate. If you're just tuning in, tonight... In an historic first, Americans can ask any question at any time just by stepping into one of the thousands of democracy kiosks we've placed in front of 7-Elevens across the country. Decatur, Illinois, let your voice be heard. Hi, everybody. My name is Joe Crawford, and my question is, how many taco and cheese taquitos do you think I can eat in 60 seconds? Kevin, uh, have we screened all of these? We haven't, but we can. We can't. Great. Straight from the heart of America, raw and unfiltered, Rockville, Maryland, to Boulder, Colorado. This is the most powerful sword in the planet. So we really can't screen these things, Kevin? Not at all. Okay, then I think I'll just ask a question of my own. What's that? Okay, no, I won't. Austin, Texas. This is the Onion News Network. Hey, it's Free Talk Live, live Saturday edition of the program. We'll take your calls about what you want, 855-450-FREE. We are on the transgender bathroom topic uh, all over again, and, and a lot of people have strong opinions about this. They want to talk about it. Uh, the issue was a caller in the last hour, right in the beginning of the show, basically, first first segment, just happened to call in and explain a, an incident that happened wherein the person was in the bathroom, the men's bathroom, and they saw a person they thought was a female in that bathroom. It was it kind of threw them for a loop, a little shock, then looked a little closer and noticed that that might actually be someone who was born as a male, perhaps a transgendered uh, individual in the bathroom there, and it led to a larger conversation about, do you have a right to, be to not be offended by another person's presence in the bathroom? As far as I'm concerned, you don't have such a right, and there's all kinds of things that can be offensive. But one lady said that it was immoral. To be transgender, just to be transgender, let alone go into the supposed wrong bathroom. And I still don't know. She never really did give a satisfactory answer as to why it's immoral. Does God say something about that in the Bible, too? Uh, so what is it that is immoral about it? What is wrong with someone who believes something about themselves, firmly believes it so much that they're willing to put themselves in the one of the most awkward positions you could be in socially. Nobody really wants to do this, right? Nobody, I mean, wants to be a pariah socially. And I'm not saying that I would treat a person as a pariah. I respect people's choices. But there's enough people out there. We heard a story about a you know, transgender person who was not feeling welcome in either bathroom. Why would someone, you know, voluntarily choose to do that? Well, w w one thing we haven't touched on is, is uh, I, I didn't realize this was going to go in the direction of uh, God said this and God said that. But if God creates us all whole, perfect and complete. We need to acknowledge that God creates some of us sexually androgynous, that there are a surprising number of people who, yeah, you, the, the gender's a little shifty as to who this is and exactly what's going on down there. And I'm just going to go out there and say, it's none of your business. But yeah. this is true. Like this is, we cannot say that God creates everybody perfectly male and female. God chooses to create some of them 
in the middle or, you know, undefined or whatever term we're going to use for it. And how do we treat those people and what bathroom should the, do? Do we need uh, the, the crotch feeler at the door to decide who gets to go where? I mean, now, and if you acknowledge that God creates some people sexually ambiguous physically, then why can we not acknowledge that God might create some people sexually ambiguous Le- uh, ambiguous mentally. If that's the case, then what's wrong with that person trying to fit in the world the way they wish to fit in? Indeed. The toll-free number tonight, if you want to share your thoughts, is 855-450-FREE. Let's talk to Eric in Arkansas. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Eric. Hey, how you doing? Good, sir. Go ahead. Okay. I mean, y'all brought up so many definitions. Um, first of all, about the uh, I'm a business owner. I have the right to run my business any way I want to. I believe in that to a point. If you run a business and you open it up to the public, you also have taken on the responsibility of the public's safety while they're in your business. Now, I bring that up because if you open up public restrooms to transgender, whoever wants to go wherever they want to go, they can go there. What's going to keep some pervert from putting on a dress guy pervert from yep, putting I got on you. a dress and going, hey, I am transgender. I'm pre-op transgender. I'm going to go to the girls' ball. Yep. What's That's to what prevent that right now? Well, the, the, nothing right now pre- prevents it as far as what, what the conversation is going, the way we're talking. But if you open it up to transgender, it's going to open that door up. Well, I think that it's already the door. What what you're talking about I mean, as far right, as transgenders right now, right already now, occurs. Right now, here in, here in Arkansas, right now, yeah. I'm in a small town. I got 285 people in my hometown. All right. It's a little bitty place. If I walk into the gas station I'm stopped at right now, if I walk into the gas station here and I see a, uh, a guy dressed like a woman walk into the girls' bathroom, and I know that there's a couple of teenage girls in there, hey, I'm going to raise some alarm here. That you should talk to the business business manager if that's what uh, if that's what you wish to do, and then they should be able to, right. to handle that the way they wish to handle it. But the point right. I'd well, like to make is we is we're make singling make out law, transgenders if here. We make a law as transgender can go wherever they want to. No one no said law. that. No one here has said there should be a law on this show. Right. We've I'm just saying there said, isn't a law that okay. says that you can't. Right. We've specifically been talking about private property, so I want to make sure we're clear on this. Right. That as a private well, property private owner, property, you should be able to you sit. Are still are still responsible for the public safety. I don't think I don't you believe are. that's true. How yeah. could you? How could the private property that's owner have to provide? Uh, you know, b- why what do I have McDonald's to put a bouncer example? in the how bathroom? Can they McDonald's. How can they consume McDonald's for you spilling hot coffee on you when you ordered hot coffee? As I understand, that's that case employee. was that case was uh, overturned. But let me ask you this: um, If we're talking about men are rape machines, which is kind of what you're saying here, that's fine. We'll go, no, we'll just I, go I, ahead I, with I, that. I, I use the man as the example. Right, because he's stronger. Or, um, you know, it, it's either way. It's either way. I okay, mean, fine. A female, a female is, it can be just as big of a predator as a male. Where do you That's want strong. the gay people to go to go potty? Because gay people are going to the bathroom with your young son. My seven-year-old son goes to the bathroom by himself in public, and I can assure you he cannot fight off a grown man in the bathroom. Is that business owner in some way responsible for something terrible that happens to young people in his bathroom? Morally, Brad, no. No, but he's not. No, not even and he's legally. Not legally. I mean, is anymore. You're responsible for anything that happens on your property. Period. I, I'm sorry. I mean, this is a, we, we've turned into a hey, what's through everybody's society? Yeah, well, you that's know, uh, one of the problems with being I, open I, for business. I, I hate it it's that way, but I mean, morally, no. In my opinion, no, the, the, the business owner is not responsible. Well, I don't even think legally because you know the difference between somebody being molested or raped in a bathroom. Is, you know, by just some other customer is very, very different than a, an employee acting on behalf of the business doing something to damage or to harm a customer. In the latter on, case, on. it seems pretty clear that the business would have some liability. Uh, but in the former case, unless that bathroom is being monitored 24-7 by cameras, which would probably put the business at li- in a liability uh, as well. Right, there again, um, but if they wanted to run their business that way. I mean, that, going, going to that argument, I mean, there is a law against that. You, I mean... There's a, there's a lot of gray area there, and and we keep talking about if okay, if um, what does it matter to me what this guy wants to do or this woman wants to do with their life? If they want to change to be you know if he if he feels like he's more comfortable and identifies better as a woman, or if she identifies better as a male, so be it. Okay, I'm cool with that. Um, okay. If you want to identify as a dog, 
then I'm cool with that too. But if you go and hike your leg on a, if you go hike your leg on a on a, a fire hydrant in public, you're going to get in trouble. You probably will. There's, there's no, there's no, there's no guarantee that okay. You're saying, you know, I heard y'all say uh, that there's no right for me not to be offended or in a bathroom. Okay, well, there's no right for you to urinate wherever you want to either. Oh, no, I totally where, agree. Out where I live, you there's know? all kinds of trees, and nobody's going to bother you. Well, yeah, but well, I totally yeah, agree with you there, you Eric. Just go out the back door, you know. But, but of course, there's no right to go to the bathroom wherever you want because of private property. Here's the solution. Yeah, we can cut it down to really simple solution. I mean, we, we overthink it. We get emotional into it. Look, it's it's like this. If you're if you're a male, if you have male parts between your legs, you go to the male bathroom. If you have female parts between your legs, you go to the female restroom. If you identify as the opposite sex and you're pre-surgical, I'm sorry. What you've got between your legs determines where you go to the rest. See, I, and who's going to check me? I would say something similar. However, what I would say is is that you just have to be convincing because no one's going to check for what's between your legs. I don't want to live in the world no, where right. people care what's between you're my legs. Right. What I say is, is <laughs> what's convincing. I could be sitting here as a woman, but I've convinced you that I'm a man, and that's all that matters. Yeah, that's true. Eric, thanks for the call, as, man. As I do appreciate society. it. Thank you, sir. The toll-free number tonight is 855-450. For I want to make sure we got room to get uh, – as many people in here as possible, lots of folks with opinions and strong ones. Steve in Norfolk, Virginia, listening to WNIS. Hey, Steve. Hey, y'all doing tonight? Hey, welcome, sir. Go ahead. Yes, um, I feel like we just got a uh, slippery slope here. We we just keep adding on to slippery slope, and uh, and um, the society just won't uh, accept. Uh, the way we're slipping is what I'm trying to get to. I mean, we got special rules right now for the gays and the, and the gender types that are confused. But um, even special rules for them, that means laws that are made up to protect these people that uh, uh, that go far beyond. What, well, I don't uh, think that there should be special treatment for anybody. And thank you, Steve, for your call tonight. There's more on the way here in moments on Free Talk Live. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Free Talk Live. You guys live in a dream world. No, sir, you're the one that lives in a dream world. You're the one that wants to have a police state in America where you get to determine who can come in and who can't. You want to have you border want to patrols. Let you want to have checkpoints. You want to let the entire third world into this country? Sir, let me get, let, I'll answer that question by reading a short excerpt from a poem. Maybe you've heard of it. It happens to appear at the bottom of the Statue of Liberty. It was you're about... You're poor, you're tired, tired, huddled masses. Right, you are you aware of it, yes. Let them come in legally, legally. 
legal. Well, no, come on, the legally, <laughs> Lou. The legal is such a cop in. out. Now, hold on a second, because when your ancestors came across, and I don't know what they are, let's say they're Italian. When your ancestors came across, all they did was take you to Ellis Island, screw up your last name, sit you around for three days, and then bam, you're out the door. Now, legal is a huge pile of paperwork and tens of thousands of dollars. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll-free, 855-450-FREE, or you can join us via Skype. And you'll tend to sound a lot better on Skype. Skype username here tonight is lrn.fm. Joining you in studio, it's Ian. And Mark. And don't forget to check out the Pocket Power Plus. It is a battery, but it's a little more than your standard battery. There's a lot of these batteries out there that'll charge up uh, your phone, for instance. And it can do that. It can charge your phone probably for more than uh, at least a day or, or two. Uh, yeah, and depending on how much you use it, obviously. But right, it, the big, can, big phones. Yeah, you can charge, you can run your electronic devices for hours, even days if necessary with the Pocket Power Plus. And the plus uh, stands for the fact that this is an am- amazing breakthrough in portable power technology. And plus, you could even jumpstart a car in some circumstances with the Pocket Power Plus. Now, how do you get it? You go to pocketpowerplus9.com. And the 9 is a way for them to uh, give you a special discount because you're coming through uh, through our front door, if you will. And so, again, pocketpowerplus9.com. Use coupon code FTL to get an even better price on the Pocket Power Plus, but you're already getting it at half off just by going to pocketpowerplus9.com. And it comes with, by the way, the jumper cables. It comes with an accessory pack that has all kinds of adapters to likely make this thing hook up to whatever phone or laptop you might possess. And again, it comes with the jumper cables. So go to pocketpowerplus9.com. Use coupon code FTL. That's pocketpowerplus9.com. As we continue with your calls and thoughts, we've been talking about bathroom issues. Specifically, who should be allowed? I can't believe this has been what it is. It's back, Mark. I mean, it was uh, it was a good topic previously. We didn't bring this to the table tonight. We just had somebody randomly uh, call in about this. And people have very, very strong feelings about this. And then that's that's understandable. You know, when you talk about something on talk radio, if you're discussing something that everyone can relate to, then it's inevitable that a lot of people are going to have, especially if it's controversial, it's inevitable that a lot of people are going to want to participate. They're going to want to have their opinion heard. And everyone who is a human being, everyone who, you know, whether they can even understand the words I'm saying, they can relate to this issue uh, because everybody goes to the bathroom. And so, inevitably, people are going to have opinions about this, and probably every single person who walks into a bathroom will have an opinion about this one way or the other. I'd be interested to know what the breakdown is. It would make for an interesting opinion survey to see how people would feel about encountering a transgender person in the bathroom. Personally, it wouldn't bother me at all. I'm there to do my business. I don't care who else is in there, as long as they're not creeping on people. And I don't see any reason why someone who's transgendered would be more or less likely to creep than anyone else. There's plenty of creeps out there. Just because they have a a belief about the gender that they should be doesn't make them more likely to be a child molester or anything like that at all. Yeah, I was just thinking about this. Uh, Children were brought into the issue, um, and uh, 
I, I didn't even think about it, but my son's been introduced to transgendered people and hasn't thought about it at all. Yeah, there was at least one at the key invention. Yeah. And she's very nice. Yeah, what's the big deal? All right, let's continue here in moments, or actually right now, with your phone calls at 855-450-FREE. Let's go to, we've got Brian in Indianapolis listening to WIBC. Hello, Brian. Hello. Uh, And you guys have kind of backed off of the reason I called, but one of you mentioned my son going going to the bathroom next to a gay man. Well, I'm a gay man. I'm a veteran. You'd never know I was gay if you met me uh, day to day. But uh, I was kind of offended by that comment. I try to be a libertarian, but there are certain things that I probably don't fit into the libertarian mold on. I'm very conservative, even as a gay man. Yeah, they have the, actually so, the log pa- cabin Republicans. It's a gay organization amongst the um, Republicans. From and, whom right. did this offensive comment right. come? He I, misunderstood what I said. Yeah, I haven't. Um, right. So what I was trying to do was show to the gentleman uh, what uh, you know what we were talking about is is that it's sort of ludicrous that a, a transgendered person might be a threat to somebody in the bathroom. Right. Be, right. What I used as an example was, is, look, if you think transgendered people are threats in the bathroom, you likely think that gay people are threats in the bathroom. So, look, my son goes into the bathroom on his own and he's probably gone in with gay people because, well, you know, something like 10 percent of the population's gay. And somehow he's come out whole and complete and it hasn't been a problem. That's what I was trying to get across. OK, I appreciate that. But that is what sparked me to call in. And OK. It just seemed like a. Uh, slam on gay people. Right, so now you understood that you that... misunderstood the uh, the comment, right? Yes, okay. I do. Okay. Or either that Thank or we you. miscommunicated it, but I'm pretty sure, Mark, that you communicated yep. it straight. Sometimes it's hard, you know, you're driving in the car and you don't hear the full the full conversation. Things go I'd fast. Like, I'd like to clarify, by the way, uh, you guys there in Indy, you are only getting our show on Saturday nights. We do a show seven nights That's a week. Correct. And uh, our Monday night co-host is as flaming gay as they get. His name yeah. is Derek J. Freeman. Um, he's a good friend of mine. He is my roommate, and uh, he is just he hosts hosts his own show called Flaming Freedom. So uh, for you know, if there was any doubt awesome. that yeah, if there's any doubt that Free Talk Live was uh, was gay friendly, then that should have cleared it up there uh, for you. And and I would recommend you check out Flaming Freedom. By the way, if you are gay, uh, and- oh, he's conservative. Will. It will. Yeah, you should check it out anyway, Mark. Don't prejudge. Don't prejudge what his opinions might be because he <laughs> self-describes as conservative. Very I think he, conservative. Yeah. All right, man. Hey, thanks for the Prepare call to be tonight. horrified. Right. <laughs> thanks. Uh, Fl- Flaming Freedom, by the way, is not a show meant for broadcast radio. It is uh, very, very much an internet sort of show, and it can be a little offensive at times. Maybe a lot offensive, depending on your proclivities and preferences. Yep. Uh, let's continue with your calls and thoughts, though. You can bring up anything here. We've got, what does that say, Carl? Uh, Carl in Fountain, Florida? Carrie? No, it's Carrie. Carrie, I'm sorry. Carrie. The, the letters were a little too small for See, me See, now, what bathroom are you going to pick now? <laughs> Go ahead with your thoughts, uh, please, Carrie. Well, we're driving, and we listen to your station occasionally, and uh, the issue of the transgender in the bathrooms came up. We came from Miami, and uh, my husband is a cross-dresser. He's a heterosexual cross-dresser. We know plenty of uh, cross-dressers, transgendered, transsexual, pre-op, and post-op. And what we learned was that you you are allowed to go to the bathroom as how you present. If you're dressed as a woman and you're a guy, you you should be allowed to go in the women's room. Now, there are stalls in the men's room and stalls in the women's room. I personally would be very uncomfortable if um, my husband took a, our baby daughter into the men's room to change. That's why I think the best introduction that came out was the family restroom. If you have one available, which I think a lot of uh, major uh Businesses should have available. Uh, if you if you feel that you might come across as a, into a problem, uh, go to the family restroom. I think that's the best 
the best thing that people could ever have in their establishment. You know, I'm curious to know more about if you don't, I mean, if you don't want to talk about it, I'm fine. I understand that. But I'm curious to know more about living with a husband who's a crossdresser. If you want to hang on, uh, Carrie, I'd, I'd like to ask you a few more questions about that. You know, like when did you find out he was a crossdresser? 855 450 free. Was it the first date? 855 450 3733. Is he crossdressing right now? Is it like an all of the time thing? These are the questions I want to know. It's Free Talk Live. More coming up. Can heart and body extract help with other ailments besides heart conditions, high blood pressure, clogged arteries, or unbalanced cholesterol? It did for Karen. I've been using heart and body extract for approximately two weeks. I've had an earwax buildup problem for many years, with over-the-counter stuff not working at all. I had very poor hearing due to this earwax buildup. Well, after two weeks of taking heart and body extract, my earwax buildup almost completely cleared up. Could this be the effect of better body circulation? Heart and Body Extract is an effective 100% organic nutritional supplement specially formulated to allow your body to heal itself. My hearing is almost completely back to normal. I'm amazed. Order by calling 866-295-5305 or online at hbextract.com. That's 866-295-5305 or hbextract.com. Heart and Body Extract for long and healthy life. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. So if you're on Medicare and have knee pain, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost. Friendly agents are standing by 24-7 to help you. We also have other pain-relieving braces, too, for your shoulder, ankle, or back. You may be eligible to get these items and more at little or no out-of-pocket cost. Our friendly representatives are standing by now to help you, so please call now. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. 
Free Talk Live. You may dial in toll-free here, 855-450-FREE is the number. And you can also join us via Skype at Skype, username lrn.fm. If you get online at all, whether it's on a smartphone, laptop, desktop computer, tablet, then you really ought to look into ProXPN. They will help protect you online from various people who might want to pry into your activities, namely your internet service provider or maybe the uh, the local coffee shop IT manager, somebody perhaps sniffing your Wi-Fi packets wherever you happen to be. You can put a stop to those activities by encrypting your data connection with ProXPN. Just go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Get started there by downloading their free software for Windows, Mac, iOS devices, Android devices, as well as Linux. You get started with the free software, and then when you're ready to upgrade to premium, You'll get servers around the world you can connect to, unlimited bandwidth, private torrenting ability, and you'll get past regionally blocked websites. You can go to proxpn.com slash FTL and use code FTL50 to get the discount of 50% off the price of their annual account on that premium package. So again, code is FTL50. The website is proxpn.com slash FTL. There's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all, unlike your ISP, who is probably logging every website that you visit and all the search terms you're entering. So go and get started. Protect yourself right now. You can do it with no obligation uh, over at proxpn.com slash FTL. Again, promo code FTL50 to get 50% off the price of the annual account, which brings the price down to around 5 bucks a month. Let's go right into your calls and thoughts here. We've got Carrie still with us listening in Florida. And Carrie, you said that your husband is not transgender, but a crossdresser, a heterosexual crossdresser, meaning a man who enjoys uh, dressing up in uh, the clothing uh, and the trappings, accessories of uh, of a woman. Is that right? Yes, and it's uh, not a sexual thing. Uh-huh. Uh, that's usually a tra- what's it called? I forget what it's called. Uh, but anyway, uh, no, he he's always liked it since he was very young. Apparently, uh, we were both married before. We were twice married, never divorced. Um, we were widowed, mm. and um, when we met, he had a big, nice mustache. And uh, I had no clue. We got married, and five years down the road, I found out he was a press dresser. Interesting. You kept he kept it from you for five years. Yes. Um, he he used to. Well, I would I would volunteer and do work, and while I was gone, he would, uh, he would need to dress. Wait, wait. Now, and, just to uh, just to be clear, did he have his own stash of women's clothing that he would like dig into while you were gone, or would he just cross dress in your clothes? Um, a little of both. <laughs> Where did he hide his stuff? I don't know. Where did you hide your stuff? <laughs> Buried in the closet. And Buried we, in the closet. See, okay. We had we had like two households. He had a household. I had a household, and a lot of stuff. Got put wherever we could put it. Yeah, that happened. So, so five. So, so five. And, go ahead. No, go ahead. What uh, were you gonna I was going to say five years in. What was the oh, event? Well, five years in. What happened? I had found. I had found some pictures of him in some outfits, and he said, "Well," and I don't know why I was stupid enough to believe it, but he said, "Oh, I put them on to see how they might look on you." You know, I'm a heavy set woman. Um, I've lost some weight since, but. Uh, dummy me, and just totally naive, I believed it. And um, I said, well, just please don't do that anymore. And I'm sure he did. But anyway, I I apparently came home a couple times, and he had to hurry and take the things off. (laughs) But then there was a show on called, I think it was My Secret Wardrobe or something like that on TLC or something like that. And he sat me down. I think he had watched it before. And he, he let me watch it, and he basically told me that's what he is, hmm. a crosser. Well, I did, and I found out when the wives or women or whoever find out about the thing, uh, their significant others, the first thing they ask is, are you gay? In our ignorance, and I'm not trying to offend anyone, in our ignorance, the first question usually is, are you gay? Mm-hmm. Well, that was a big no. Um, are you going to change? Are you interested in changing your, your gendering? He said, no. And 
I think there's another couple questions that are some people ask, but the other one is, are you keeping anything else from me? And he said, no. Yeah. Um, so I, I love and, this story. It's, I think it's really interesting. I don't know if we've ever really talked about just plain old cross-dressing. Uh, so I, I still have more questions. So another question uh, no problem. Yeah, is now when I, and I imagine there's different levels of this, right? Because there's, you know, a spectrum of, of everything out there as we've been discussing tonight. Um, so do some cross-dressers, and you may not know because you may not have experience with other ones, just him. But uh, yeah, so I'm just throwing I this do. question out there to the world. Do some cross-dressers do their, uh, you know, like put on makeup and others just want to look like a man in a dress? Now, understand, the biggest thing, oh, another question was why. Most cross-dressers do not know why. Mm. But understand, all of society's um, exposure to cross-dressers are Clinger from MASH, um, uh, Guys and Dolls, uh, Bosom Buddies, I mean, Tom Hanks. Yep. Um, what else? Tootsie. Sure. Um you know, things like that. And there was always a reason why Klinger wanted out of the Army. Yep. Tootsie needed a job. Mm-hmm. But the buddies, they needed a place to live. So there was always a real reason why. Well, for most cross-dressers, there isn't. Hmm. Now, not all cross-dressers are um, transsexual. Um, some are. Some do progress towards that. But um, anyway, the first thing I did was get online to the computer, and this was in IRC chats. It wasn't Facebook or anything like that. This was 14 years ago. We've been married 19 years. Mm. Um, so I got on the computer, and I found a chat room that uh, were cross-dressers. I figured there had to be something. Oh, yeah. And I, start, I said, I explained the situation. I said, I have questions. And what, uh, they all said, ask away. We're glad to answer. Well, almost every question I asked, they could only give um, their answer, but most of the time it was, you've got to ask him. Hmm. Well, my husband didn't know why he cross-dressed, but he, we found all kinds of people who we could talk to, and we learned a lot. And after a while, I got used to it. Uh, there, were, there were rules that I had, um, you know, as far as intimacy. I wanted him as a man. And, okay. And then stay. But I won't go into all that. But yeah, no, no, that's understandable. So, uh, but, so he, is it still okay. something that he's just sort of doing on his own at home? Or? Sounds like a hobby. The guy just likes the feeling of silky panties. What's the big deal? Yeah, whatever. I don't care. You know, whatever floats your boat. But I mean, is this something where well, he'll he'll dress up as as he goes out places, or is it only an in the home kind of uh, thing? It started out in the home. We found a really nice group at the time called Try Us, and they would go out and. Um, I, he would, we got, in fact, I gave him some of my clothes. I bought him some clothes. I bought him some shoes. Um, I, we bought a wig for him. Eventually, he <laughs> let his hair grow out. He shaved his mustache. He finally got my permission to do it. I do miss the mustache. But anyway, um, I've accepted it. He would go in underwear and sometimes maybe a bra underneath his clothes. He would go to work. And believe it or not, eventually he was allowed to cross dress at work. Incredible! It was the it was the law. They couldn't they couldn't tell him he couldn't. Um, hey, Carrie, thank you. I think it's been very, uh, very interesting, enlightening uh, information that you shared with us, and, and very personal. I appreciate you uh, digging deep for us, and thank you for for the call and hanging on with us tonight. Oh. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Learn something new every night. Here on Free Talk Live, or at least it's a I wild do. world out there, and yeah. you know that that guy with the uh, epic mustache might wear women's clothes at home. Yeah, you never know. And uh, you know, why do you care? Or maybe he's wearing them right now. Grow up. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> what are you wearing? Eight fifty five, four fifty free. <laughs> You can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features there. We're going to continue. Plenty of time for you and your thoughts about whatever's on your mind. And you can join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. 
So we decided to upgrade the look of our home. You know, improve the curve appeal. We decided to add the look of stone to the exterior. We really like the stacked stone look. Yeah, but when I checked into the price, it was ridiculous. No way could we afford it. Then a friend told me about Genstone. G-E-N-S-T-O-N-E. Genstone comes in lightweight panels made of polyurethane. They've actually engineered the hassle out of installation. No mortar, no mesh. It was easy. Even I could do it. We just screwed the panels to the wall and it looks like stone. I mean, it really looks like stone. Yeah, from the box to the wall in minutes. We love the look of our home now. And Genstone is durable, comes with a 25-year warranty, and offers additional R-value for insulation. If you want the look of stone at a price you can afford, call Genstone. At 855-955-STONE. Trust me, you'll save money. And you'll love the look. 855-955-STONE. That's 855 855- Five five nine five five seventy eight sixty six. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates. 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary. Not a solicitation for legal services. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can dial in toll-free to share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. Also, still to come tonight, a TSA agent is speaking out against groping. Uh, But with you in studio right now, it's Ian. And Mark. And don't forget to join us online over at freetalklive.com. If you like the show and you want to help support Free Talk Live, please shop with us. Go to shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop dot freetalklive.com you can enter into amazon there you can also use walmart there's a walmart link there by the way 
Uh, but uh, Amazon's really where it's at. You go to the Amazon stores in either the UK, the uh, Canada, or the US, and Free Talk Live will get a cut of the sale. So just go to the right Amazon for you, get your shopping done, get what you're looking for. And again, Free Talk Live gets a cut when you enter through shop.freetalklive.com. Right back into your calls and thoughts. We've got Ari listening in Montpellier, Vermont. Ari, you're on Free or, or, Yeah, Ari, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, how are you? Hey, you're on the air and I'm doing well. Go ahead. Well, I'm transgender. I'll start with that. And addressing the restroom issue. Since I started living full time, I'm pre op, by the way. Okay. But since I started living full time and I'm out in public, I have always used the women's restroom. How I convincing are you? Me- I know this has got to be hard to answer for yourself, but how convincing are you? Well, it's interesting that you ask that because oftentimes, you know, I live in a very small town, and oftentimes a lot of people say, I never thought of you as anything other than a woman until you speak hmm. because of my voice. Okay. So I guess to answer that question is this, I would be what they would call passable. Yep, gotcha. Okay. Um. I've had experiences throughout the country, because I've lived all over the country, where in my travels, going into a men's room, and I won't say presenting myself as female, because I am female. It's not presenting myself. This is who I am. You don't feel confused, as some of the callers were rudely suggesting earlier? Oh, I am confused, and I'm probably a little angry about it, but that's... (laughs) <laughs> you know, that's really here and there. But what I mean is, Beyond? you're not confused about uh, your own gender. Oh, I've known since I was four years old. Right. I grew up in an Italian Catholic family. I have five brothers. Yeah, that's what I was trying to communicate to them earlier, is that the, the folks who are transgendered are not confused, at least the ones that I've known. They're very, very sure of uh, of who they are. And uh, So I tell me more about your experiences. About, uh, you well, know, hit. First, seeing people in these bathrooms across the country. What have you experienced? Well, first, I've known since I was four years old. Yeah. I'm in my 50s. Um, I've been in, in restrooms, going into a men's restroom, presenting, as they say, presenting myself as female. I've run into violence. I've run into accusations. I've run into verbal abuse, mm. potential physical abuse. So men's bathrooms seem like the more dangerous place for you. I believe it. Absolutely. And when I'm using a women's restroom, I'm in there for a purpose, and that's to use the restroom. Right. I'm not in there for any other purpose. You're in your own separate stalls in most cases in most of these restrooms. They're not like in in a men's room where you could have open stalls everywhere. You do your business, you wash your hands, you leave. It's as simple as that. I, I've i never been confronted in a women's restroom wow. as to my gender identity. I think now, it's fascinating. Here's, here's a funny thing. Yeah, go ahead. Growing up, growing up, we used to go to a spa with the family on weekends. The two younger of us, of us boys, would always be brought with our mother into the women's locker room to change and put on our swimsuits. That was never a problem, and that was back in the 60s. Yeah, I think that there's an age at some point where it just starts getting weird, and I don't know what that age is, um, but it, I suspect it's somewhere around six years old. Um, but before that, it's just like, you know, you, you go with mom. All right, yeah. good, good call. Anything else you want to share tonight? I'm just really sad that people want to throw in religious beliefs and things of that nature. Um the biggest thing I want to say to the religious people is, according to the religion, we were all made in God's image. So wouldn't that make God everyone? Indeed. Yeah, including... God's clearly got to be, and uh, like androgynous is the best term I can come up with. Yeah. Uh, you know, God's not male or female, right? Correct. All right, good call. Although... Thanks. Very thoughtful. I do appreciate hearing from you tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. The physical trappings of gender 
are something that God would have had to have created in order for the species to procreate and every other species to procreate. Now, Mm -hmm. I don't know how this came about. I am a believer. However, um, I also believe that I also believe in evolution at the same time. So somehow or another, I can fit those things in for my mind. But I mean, you know, gender is just something to procreate the species, to make us work together, you know, those kind of things. It doesn't have anything to do with, you know, God being male or female. I don't believe uh, I don't believe that for a second. Well, let's continue where we have Aaron on the line listening in Indy to WIBC. Hello, Aaron. Oh, uh, good evening. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I guess I wanted to throw out it. I wanted to throw out a different question. You guys seem to be. Uh, the restroom thing doesn't really have a lot of consequences, I think, if someone's in there doing their business. Right. But what about something else, like if you had a transgender person competing in competitive sports? We did. I, I think Excellent there's, question. Uh, one of those, there's a cage match fighter who's a post-operative female who's, uh, I guess, does a pretty good job of beating the snot out of women. Or there was a uh, high school kid, I guess he was a pre-op male, who... Uh, was wanting to play girls softball and in both situations i think you have people who are developmentally male maybe not psychologically female and uh but you know they've obviously got a competitive edge it's men against women physical wise and i'm not talking people who are like you know ambiguous like you had that uh runner in south africa who obviously had some uh questions, but someone who's specifically solidly male that identifies Mm -hmm. female or whatever. That's an interesting question. Again, I think it would come back to private property in that if the team was a private team, that they should be able to make those determinations. Usually there's associations that go along. along. But let's assume for a second that you and I are the league, you know, um, and it's, uh, it's a league for a sport where upper body strength really makes a difference. And I'm going to have to say uh, that it's it's too it's too much for me. Like I just can't answer this question because I find it to be an unfair advantage. But at the same time, I find that if you have the dedication in order to uh, change your b- genitals, which in most cases are you know dearly held by an individual, yeah. um, if you if you have that kind of dedication, um, like I'd say, okay, I get it. Um, you know, you you really are a woman. Whatever. I think it's so difficult that I would probably just say. You can't compete here because it's just so hard to say. I mean, if we're talking about, for instance, like you'd said, uh, uh, mixed martial arts fighting, I am not going to let somebody who has the, uh, the the upper body strength of a man go in and fight fair against a woman. That's not mm-hmm. that ain't a fair fight. Well, now what if she's jacked? I mean, what if this lady's been? There are a out, few gals pumping, out there um, that iron. that can beat men, but they're. Uh, they are a they are a rare yeah. rare rare bird. I'll Aaron, say. Anything else you want to share? Go ahead. Well, no, I think uh, you guys answered my question. Right. So I just, or I guess maybe just broadly, uh, you know, where there's other consequences, like a restroom is just as you said, you go in there, you do your dues and wash your hands, and you're done. So right, yeah, everyone's but, no, equal on that account. <laughs> Thanks for the call yeah. tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. But, yeah, I think it would come down to what the league wants. You know, what what rules does the league feel would be the most fair rules? And if you don't like those rules, don't play in that league or start your own league, right? Uh, and I, I think it would be pretty entertaining to have a tranny league. <laughs> I suppose. Uh, it, it, let's start with roller derby. Ooh, a tranny roller derby league? It'd be yeah. funny. Yeah, it would. Uh, that would be very entertaining because, you know, uh, the, I've noticed at least, and it's pro- probably an unfair stereotype uh, to say that uh, just gay people just seem to have a little bit more fun with, uh, you know, being flamboyant and, uh, you know, and knowing how to party and all that. That's just been my experience. You can try it any time, buddy. Try going gay? Yeah. Uh, I've kind of tried Give it a shot. In, the, in the past. I've, <laughs> I've kind of been there. Uh, the toll-free number is 855. And you're not fun at all, so it's just, just a free. broad... Well, I'm not gay, right? I'm, uh, you know, just uh, experimented when I was a kid, and that's about it. I'm, not com- I'm comfortable. Let's go to Jason. He's in Newport. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Jason. Yes, sir. Thank you guys for having me. Great show. Our pleasure. You go ahead, Hi. sir. Hi. Uh... Well, I, I just heard you uh, say something about tranny. I, I, I always thought that that was a derogatory term for trans, transgender people. Uh, 
I think that it could be used in any manner, um, any variety of manners. You know what, Jason, stand by. I want to bring you back. Make sure you have a chance to get all your thoughts out. So if you don't mind, hang on. I think it's the tone of voice. Oh, in the way that you deliver it, you mean? Yeah. Okay. More coming up here in moments. If you'd like, you may share your thoughts with us. 855-450 free. More free talk live on the way. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand it's about demonstrating to the entire country that, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, April 18th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.27 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,205 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $223. Antiwar.com reports the purge of Palestinian civilians during the founding of Israel left a lot of empty Arab-owned housing across the country, owned by a lot of refugees who were never to return. The 1948 Absentees Property Law allowed the state to seize those homes to redistribute to incoming Jews. Yesterday, the Israeli Supreme Court has ruled that the law can be applied to occupied East Jerusalem, allowing the Israeli government to seize the property of Palestinian owners if they live in the occupied West Bank. The judges on the panel urged the law to be rarely used, but said there could be situations where the homes of Arabs could be seized outright if they live in Judea or Samaria with the approval of the Attorney General. Rights groups complain that the law is overbroad and selectively enforced to benefit far-right factions. They noted that in the wake of the Six Days War, a number of West Jerusalem homes were seized from Palestinians who had not actually moved simply because the boundaries of the city were redrawn and they were suddenly ruled to live outside of the city. In theory, they warned the government could just as easily apply this law to Israeli military conscripts, shipping them off to occupied territories and then seizing their homes on the grounds that they are abroad. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. 
UPI reports a Japanese train line that uses magnetic charge to lift and move train cars broke a previous speed record on Thursday. The Magnetic Levitation Bullet Train, or Maglev, operated by Central Japan Railway Company, reached 590 kilometers per hour. Its speed surpassed a previous record of 581 kilometers per hour set in December 2003 by the same firm. Kyoto News reported the seven-car Maglev train ran at the world's highest speed for 19 seconds seconds using new LO series cars on a track between Yunahara and Fuafuki in Yamanashi Prefecture just west of Tokyo. The new record, however, may be beaten next week when another test ride may see the train run as fast as 600 kilometers per hour. Passengers on Japan's train system, however, are not likely to experience the lightning test speeds even after 2027 when the maglev train lines are slated to open to the public. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is expected to promote Japan's train technology during his visit to the United States, which will begin April 26th. Abe is scheduled to stop in California, a state with strong ties to the Asia-Pacific region that is planning a high-speed rail line modeled after similar lines in Japan and Europe. On Tuesday, U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said Washington is working overtime ahead of Abe's visit. A South Korean newspaper reported Blinken said he is looking forward to reaching an agreement on the Trans-Pacific Partnership with Japanese officials and on revisions to the U.S.-Japan Defense Cooperation Guidelines. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports President Barack Obama said on Friday a bill allowing Congress to review a deal concerning Iran's nuclear program was a reasonable compromise he planned to sign, and he expressed confidence that it would not derail talks with Tehran. Obama told a White House news conference that Senate Foreign Relations Committee Chairman Senator Bob Corker and the panel's leading Democrat Ben Cardin had agreed that they would protect the bill from poison pill amendments that would be tilted towards trying to kill an agreement with Iran. After initially opposing Opposing congressional intervention, Obama conceded that lawmakers would have the power to review an agreement with Iran after Republicans and Democrats crafted a rare compromise measure. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Sony released this week the Nasal HD 340s, a brand new pair of high quality nose buds designed to let users blast different scents into their nostrils throughout the day. The Onion let consumers across the nation sound off about their excitement for the new product. I've always got them in my nose. At work, at the gym, on the bus, wherever. These days, I can't stop smelling tennis ball. Retailing for $49.99, the nose buds accompany the launch of Sony's new online odor store, which sells over 22,000 different smells for download and immediate inhalation. Still, not everyone is quite as enthusiastic about the new product. These things suck. I mean, a lot of times it only works out of the right nostril. The other day I tried smelling picnic table. It smelled more like hardwood floor. And also, to be honest, I have a... Really hard time breathing with these things on. This is the Onion News Network. Welcome back to more Free Talk Live here as we launch into the third hour of the live Saturday edition of the program with you in studio tonight. You've got Ian... And Mark. Don't forget, you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features waiting for you there. All free, freetalklive.com. We're going to go right back into your calls and thoughts if you're just tuning in. We've been discussing uh, transgendered folks and uh, you know how, how difficult it can be to meld into society because, well, there's a lot of people who feel very, very strongly in a negative fashion about these folks and uh, what sparked the conversation was a guy who encountered a transgendered person in the men's bathroom, which, according to a transgendered caller later on in the program, is actually one of the scariest places to be if you are of a transgendered nature as a you know 
born a man wanting to become or be in the process of becoming uh, a woman, going into a men's bathroom can be the scariest place because that's where the guy who called earlier, the lady rather, who called earlier, said that uh, she was threatened the most and intimidated and insulted and harassed and maybe even attacked. Uh, so it was actually in the women's bathroom where she felt the safest. And never had once, never once had a woman say, and in all different parts of the country, say anything uh, off kilter. You know, I think pronouns are kind of interesting in this circumstance because there seems to be a lot of problems over pronouns. There have been problems over pronouns since I was a kid. This isn't something new that we're facing in the next millennium or anything like that. Um, I remember you know, that when I was young, there was a problem of saying uh, that using the male pronoun to refer to a group of people or somebody whom, uh, you know, just somebody whose gender you may not know, a sort of a fictitious person in the future. Right. You know, when the next person walks through the door, he might have a pail of water fall on his head. Now, that is functionally, um, you know, as far as the English goes, that is the proper way to say something, and it's fine. But back in the 70s when I was growing up, somebody might say, his or her on his or her yeah. head he or she walks through the door it's his or her it head just complicates right. things and it's it, you know it's a problem right like i can see you know i can see why you would choose to do this try attempt to control someone else's language in this fashion i get it but uh, i mean you know it just sort of depends on how we all look at it i think what we really need at this point is are androgynous pronouns, pronouns that don't uh you know unisex pro uh, unisex pronoun but what would pro that be well, I, you know, frankly, what it is is he. If we just okay. eliminate she, however, you're going to have all kinds of problems. Right. Women talking about how they're the target of, you know, whatever discrimination, whatever it might be, um, because the male pronoun it doesn't actually belong to a particular gender. It is a gen. It can be applied to both or whatever. I mean, it is a non-gender specific pronoun. However, she is a gender specific pronoun. Let's go back to Jason. Uh, he's in Newport, Virginia. And Jason, you were making a, or I think you were intending to make a point, but we had barely any time for you. So go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Um, I wanted to preface this by saying, you know, I, I have plenty of friends that are gay, transgender. My brother is gay. Um, I don't want it to come off as incendiary, but you made a point about uh, gender being the only purpose to reproduce. So something that I've thought of in the past that, you know, kind of correlates to that, if there is a gay gene and, you know, gay people are born that way, would, you know, from a purely primalistic point of view, wouldn't that, you know, gene weed itself out through survival of the fittest? You know, if, you know, male and female are the only, are the only genders that can, you know, successfully reproduce. Wouldn't that gene eventually eliminate itself? Um, I think that uh, what research I've read on this, and it is minor, um, you know, it doesn't it doesn't confront me on a day to day basis. I'd say you're right. If there was a a gay gene, that that gay gene would weed itself out as far as uh, you know uh, over time. However, it appears as though there you know there needs to be a confluence of some genes uh, that actually come together in some ways, and so. Whatever homosexuality is or looks like might be a byproduct of a genes coming together in a particular fashion. Um, also, what we need to look at is, is that there's something called the Kinsey scale. And in the Kinsey scale, it's a scale of sexuality. Yeah. There are very few people that are strictly heterosexual and strictly homosexual. What you have are people that, eh, yeah, I've thought about it or but, you know, you know, never done anything or whatever it is. They just, you know. There's a range. Yeah, there's a range, as it were. And mostly we're kept in our little cubby holes because of sort of societal pressures. It would be really complicated for my life if I decided, ah, I'd like to try something out with uh, another man. Like my wife wouldn't dig it and I've got a son and, really, you know, just extraordinarily complicating. Probably as complicating as me trying out sex with another woman. She wouldn't, nobody there, nobody would like that either. So, um, yeah, I think that really what the answer is is that it it's a bunch of different genes. Jason, anything else you want to share? No, thank you guys for, for keeping an open mind. Thanks, man. Our pleasure. You know, that Appreciate your call tonight. Continuing now with your calls, 855-450-FREE. Kylie is in Columbus, Idaho. Hello, Kylie. You're on Free Talk Live. Hi, guys. Hi um, I just wanted to chime and uh, 
about the whole bathroom or locker room thing. Yeah, please. Um, not that long ago, it was like in the last two, maybe three months, there was a story about a, a transgender man, or a woman per se, where she was confronted by another woman in the locker room for, in fact, being of men genitalia. Mm-hmm. And the woman who confronted this transgender uh, man took it to the um, to to the management of the gym. But the gym that they were at has a policy where they don't discriminate against. Oh, you have this kind of genitalia. You have to use the right locker room or bathroom. Mm-hmm. Um, they. Are complete, they were completely open. They made a statement saying that as long as she, as the woman who had the problem with this other woman, sees herself as a woman, then she is permitted and free to use the women's locker room and restroom in that gym. That's great. Yeah, I, I can imagine fantastic. it's a real I, shocker I, if you're in the bathroom and then you see, um, you know, especially the women's uh, locker room and you you see something dangling, right? Like, a, what the heck? Right. That's not supposed to be here. Well, that's, but That's, where, that's yeah. where you ask the question, what are you doing here? And when they explain, then, oh, okay, then go ahead, no problem. Right. Just mm-hmm. don't, don't be rude and don't stare. Don't make a big deal about it. It's not... It's not like everybody is going to be happy with any of the decisions people make towards gender issues, like the whole bill signing that recently happened here in Indiana. Um, the, the thing is, we have to be open to everything. I myself am trying to figure some things out, um, but... I mean, why can't we just look past it, accept people for how they feel they should Yeah, let's it. treat people on how they behave, right? Like, you know, the person going exactly. to the, the person going into the bathroom wearing a wig isn't a threat to anyone unless they're a threat to someone, unless they're acting in exactly. a threatening right. manner if or there's some kind of weapon in the wig. Yeah. Then that should be a problem. But if it's a wig because they want to wear a wig, like a old friend of mine from high school, he is gay and he enjoys putting makeup on, and getting dressed as a woman. He posts multiple pictures of him, and he actually, he looks, he still looks like a man, but he looks good in the makeup that he does. Well, the fact is, is that people aren't going to agree on this issue anytime soon. And I think what we need to do is we need to make it so that people who are uncomfortable with this, they, you know, they need to, this lady who who had this problem with this uh, this gym, she's likely not to, you know, she's likely to change her gym membership and go someplace else. Let the market decide. And she should be able to do right. that, yeah. ultimately. And I think that it's still, I'm still going to go with the private property thing, but I, I do think that we should have a certain level of tolerance. But tolerance for everybody. This is shocking, yeah. too. I totally agree. Kylie, thanks for your call tonight. Appreciate it. Toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. You may join us on the radio waves on this live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live, which will continue uh, here with your thoughts. We do have Skype, by the way, should you like to join us there. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm on Skype. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Plenty of time for you with your thoughts. And you don't have to necessarily be on this topic. You can bring up what you want. It's Free Talk Live. This is a message for everyone suffering from acid reflux. Right now, Zimbiotics is inviting you to participate in a special nationwide giveaway of a new breakthrough that actually cures acid reflux. That's right. We're giving everyone who calls in the next 10 minutes a free full-size trial of this life-changing discovery. Just call 1-800-939-5356. If lines are busy, try again. This is an exclusive radio-only offer. Zimbiotics is our number one product for acid reflux, and there's nothing like it. Powered by all-natural, doctor-recommended ingredients, it's scientifically designed to cure acid reflux the healthy and natural way. But you can only get a free trial by calling now. Take part in this special nationwide giveaway and see the results for yourself. If you want to cure your acid reflux, call now to participate in this special nationwide giveaway of Zimbiotics. For your free trial, call 1-800-939-5356 in the next 10 minutes. Hurry, supplies are limited. 1-800-939-5356. 1-800-939-5356. 
Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live. It's the live Saturday edition of the program. You may join us here toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features waiting for you there. And one thing you can do to support the show is tip us in Bitcoin via the Bitcoin tip jar. You go to bitcoin.freetalklive.com and you can throw Bitcoins in that tip jar. You can also use our shapeshift.io link to convert 24 plus, I think that they added a few, over two dozen of these altcoins, some of the most popular altcoins out there, convert those almost instantaneously to Bitcoin and send it on over to our Bitcoin tip jar. All of it over there at bitcoin.freetalklive.com. Wait, what's that you say? You don't yet have Bitcoins? Well, then allow me to introduce you to expresscoin.com, where you can go, whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, and you can grab as pretty much many Bitcoins as you might like. Expresscoin can handle your order and they will, uh, you know, you can actually buy your Bitcoins with a money order or check over at ExpressCoin.com. Whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, you can do it from your smartphone or right from their website. They do have an app you can download over at ExpressCoin.com. Coupon code FTL will actually get you up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency at no fee at all. That's coupon code FTL over at ExpressCoin. Dot com. As we continue with your calls and thoughts, let's go first to Tyler, listening in Panama City, Florida, to WYOO. Hey, Tyler. Hey, how you doing? Hey, good. Go ahead. Take my call. Um, I just wanted to call and give a little bit of perspective on the, the other side of this coin. I am a 
female to male transgender, and oh. I am um, fully legal. All that's done. My name change. All that. Uh, the operation is different for females. It's just the top surgery is what they call it, and then you're legally male. So the what no, surgery? The top surgery. Top? You're having your breasts removed. Oh. <laughs> when you have your breasts removed, that makes you a man, um, according to the the whatever the standards of care are for yeah who who decides people. these things anyway <laughs> some so politician that's, that's wrote like, that crap down <laughs> the psychological people it's a psychological condition so they have jurisdiction over it. it's not uh, a medical condition okay. technically so that but so have I you mean, faced violence exactly. over bathrooms i mean i'm terrified in the men's bathroom but that's just because i still have to sit down you know and lots so of men sit I, down i prefer to sit well, i well, I'm glad. <laughs> That's news to me. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's concerning. I'm way more anxious in the men's bathroom than I would be if I was uh, male to female. I would be much less anxious in the women's bathroom because women are generally not as confrontational. But um, the thing is, if you're going to, you know, if you see somebody who's transgendered, you really don't consider the psychological journey that that person has undertaken yeah, in their life. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the there's a respect for that regardless those people like i'm just like the other transgender person who came in and and called in and i had you know prayed to jesus when i was going to sleep every night when i was four years old you know to make me a man and change everybody's memories and i'll be the best christian whatever you know like it's these people know this you know that something is not right and if you are a male and you were born a male and that happens to be your gender identity you know, you have no experience with the, the psychological burden of trying to first recognize that you're not in the right body and second, hmm. undertake the challenge of becoming your proper gender, even though you've been raised in the wrong gender. Because I wasn't taught how to change a tire or change oil or do any of those guy things. I was taught all the girl stuff. Not enough guys so are taught I, that either. I, Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm useless. Well, yeah, right. So this is this is 25. what convinced me, Tyler, um, because I was sort of on this, you know, I'm a social conservative, really. I live my life that way. But at some point I said, to, you know, like the this, your point of view was brought to me and uh, the, what, what you just said here. And to me, it's the most uh, convincing because if somebody has the the you know has the dedication to whatever it is the task they're doing to whack their boobs off like that person really means it like that's the yeah. you know like me and whatever yeah, my little problem is lightly. you know standing right they didn't do that lightly right the, my little problem that happens to be standing in the urinal next to that person minor compared to this person and whatever they're dealing with and once i could internalize that fact then i'm like well oh, you know, all I could really do is support that person because what they're dealing with is far beyond uh, what I have to deal with in my life. So there, there you go. I mean, like, I, I'm just going to back exactly. off. I still have a problem with giving up on pronouns. I'm a very sort of literal person. I like my words the way I like the him, her thing bugs me. But then I decided, you know what? Language is here to serve us as far as communication goes. I'm not here to serve language. And so right. I decided to give that up, too. So the pronoun thing, like, I personally wouldn't have a problem with it. And the transgender people I know, you know, they struggle with pronouns among other transgender people sometimes, too. It's not, you know, that is not as offensive as people think it is, I don't think. You I know, would hope I, not. I, it's I an, it's such an easy mistake to make. I right. made it once or how twice. Can, how can you do it? Well, I'm... you think about these people and the mental exercises they have to do to prepare themselves to do this and, and really make sure that's the right thing for them. You know, at that point, you know your gender, and if somebody calls you a he or a she at the beginning, in the first year of the transition, yeah, that's going to hurt your feelings. But after a while, it's irrelevant, you know, because it's not your gender, it's my gender. And if you don't see me the way I see myself, that is your problem. Mm. <laughs> it has nothing to do with me. It has nothing that's the to way do to approach it. And yes, I would love to see world peace and all that, but I mean, we still have racism, so this isn't going away. Yeah, but, I don't. You know. Tyler, by the way, you do sound passable as a as a man, uh, don't you think, Mark? Yeah. yeah, you you wouldn't know unless I told you. Yep. But it, it wasn't always that way. I bet you've worked, I worked very hard. I to bet get you where have I am. worked on this. And thank you for your call and thoughts here tonight. I appreciate it. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. Let's continue. Kyle L in Indianapolis, listening to Superman. Yes, I've been waiting so long <laughs> to talk to you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about earlier when you all had spoke 
about the Bible and as far as not being able to know if God was a man or what have you. I just know, I go by the Bible, you know, that's the only thing I know as far as that. Um, I mean, in the Bible it says in Genesis, God created man in his image and in his likeness. And then, of course, he made Eve from Adam and she was a, a, a female. Um, then I think, too, as far as, you know, the Adam's apple is, is on men and men only because it's from Adam. That's just how I see things. <laughs> Yeah. So um, when I was talking about my personal beliefs as far as God, and I I don't take the Bible as uh, the l- literal word of God. I think that it's the uh, it's the view of God of some people who lived between four and two thousand years ago. Yeah. And you know, just sort of the way they see God. So I don't consider old Bronze Age uh, folklore about where. Uh, humans were created to be, uh, you know, sort of fact-based as far as uh, what God thinks or what mm-hmm. God, God doesn't think. To me, I'm just looking at God, uh, you know, as I see him or her, you know, like him present himself. And I think that this him is a pronoun that uh, can refer to him, males and females uh, present himself in a way that, uh, you know, I can understand. If God can't present himself in a way that I can understand, then God has no business sending me to hell. Right. So that's um, that's when my view on it, I'm just not willing to to use the Bible as some kind of, uh, you know, as the only guide to finding right. God. I think there's lots of books out there. Well, right. Well, I'm, it's not just that. I mean, I just think about it, you know, as far as, you know, uh, it, I just know it takes the opposite sexes to make children, even though some people think we came from monkeys. And I say, if we came from monkeys, then why are monkeys still here? But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the call, Kalel. Appreciate it. The toll free right. number is 855 450 free. If we came in... from apes, why are monkeys still here? I don't know. I mean, you know, let's come back monkeys. to that. It's free talk live. Measles is activating on a mass scale now due to the vaccines and iron poisoning. All symptoms, disease, and deaths are due to measles and iron, not just rash and flu-like symptoms, as the officials claim. Measles requires a host with iron to replicate. Iron intake is at an unprecedented level. Deaths and hospitalizations are set to soar now in 2015. This is the extermination plan, people. For further information, go to unveilingthem.com. U-N-V-E-I-L-I-N-G them.com. Unveilingthem.com. Avoid bankruptcy. Does credit card debt have you living paycheck to paycheck? Our attorneys at the Legal Center for Debt Resolution will find the absolute best debt reduction solution for you or you pay nothing. It's called pay for performance and you won't pay a dime until the job's done. That's right. No upfront fee, no monthly fees. Nada. You pay nothing until after your account is settled. If you owe 10, 30, or even $50,000 in credit card debt, call the Legal Center for Debt Resolution at 800-449-4269. 800-449-4269. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. 
It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Here is the Onion Week in Review Transportation Edition. In Albany, a Greyhound bus crash claimed 30 miserable lives Tuesday, finally putting over two dozen deadbeat fathers, penniless drug addicts, and hapless bastards out of their misery. Emergency crews at the scene of the merciful accident described the sea of fast food bags, candy bar wrappers, and losing lottery tickets surrounding the crash site as utterly tragic, adding that the scorched corpses inside the bus were, quote, only slightly more lifeless than before the deadly accident. Evidence suggests that most of the victims suffered during the crash and for many years before they even boarded the bus. All I can say is, thank God no one made it. Al-Qaeda is refusing to carry out any further terrorist attacks until the U.S. mass transportation infrastructure is drastically improved, calling the country's roads and bridges a, quote, travesty, unbecoming of a developed first world nation. We want to turn your bridges into rubble. But if we took credit for making them collapse, no one would ever believe us. This is the Onion News Network. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Back with more Free Talk Live on this live Saturday edition. Our toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. We've got lots of features there waiting for you. You just go and get interactive. We've got, uh, by the way, YouTube channel. I don't think we mention this often enough. You go to youtube.freetalklive.com, and you can actually watch the show if that's something that you want to do. Uh, you can observe the physical studio premises and the people sitting in the studio. It's it's not the best production in the world, but, you know, it's there if you want to do that. Go to YouTube. I know I've just done a terrible job of selling this. YouTube.freetalklive.com. It'll take you right to our channel. And every now and then, uh, you'll see something pop up on the YouTube channel that you don't expect. Uh, that you know Normally, it's like three-hour-long shows, but every now and then, we'll put something else Get up Get some there. clips. Um, not so much clips. Well, there was that one clip of you flipping out that one time. So there was that. And then the African fundraiser video is up there as well. Mm -hmm. So every now and then there's other stuff up there. So check out our YouTube channel at youtube.freetalklive.com. And of course, you can always download MP3 downloads and listen to our live streaming anytime at freetalklive.com. Yeah, in the last segment we were, uh, you know, at the end, it was just sort of this uh, jab against... Uh Evolution and uh, the idea that people evolved from monkeys. That was the caller who was jabbing. Yep. And, you know, as a believer um, in, in God, I find this, I find myself really in the middle because I tend to, be, I tend to believe what experts say. I figure if you spend your whole day doing something that you're probably going to have a lot of knowledge about it beyond what I do. So, for instance... I don't let my I I wouldn't let just my good friend do brain surgery on me. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't let them uh you know f just fix the brakes of my car. Yep. Uh like for instance, um you know, I'm going to want those things done by experts. And in the same way, I'm going to choose to believe uh people, you know, uh, people scientists who who study this stuff who come to the conclusion that uh, humans have evolved from uh, low, lesser species, uh, you know, different species over time. I'm going to choose to believe what they say. And I really sort of believe that the spark of life uh, is created by a greater, greater being. I think that there's a, a sort of a moral fabric that flows throughout uh, our lives and that that moral fabric was likely created by a greater being. And I find things like fractals and, uh, you know, these reoccurring numbers and, uh, and shapes in nature to be signatures of God. But I don't think that that excludes in some way. Because a lot of times when you're dealing with uh, people who believe creationists, they're trying to fit a particular creationist box. And I don't fit into, you know, a Christian or Muslim or Buddhist uh, creationist box. I fit into a sort of the, the world I see. And... So for me, I'm not going to try to to, uh, to 
finagle, believe what I choose to believe from science, and then forget the stuff that doesn't fit, doesn't fit into the faith that I was taught when I was four years old by somebody who was taught a faith when they were four years old and over and over again, um, just firmly believing that uh, the, the faith that they were, were taught in the geographic area that they grew up must be the right one. Toll free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. Alana is in Atlanta, Georgia. You're on Free Talk Live. Alana. Hi, guys. I'm so glad to talk to you. I, I picked your show up last week, and I was just, I, you know, I listen to talk radio probably. If, if I'm up, it's it's going on somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe one or two different channels. You guys are just have such great discernment, and I'm like, right on, right on. I completely agree with you guys, but uh, this is a very interesting subject for me because it's what I personally uh, have uh, found myself seated in the middle of, and uh, that is, um, I'm as a cross-dresser, um, I've taken it, it kind of in a different level um, because, you know, drag queens, they tend to stink with their money. There are a lot of transsexuals. A lot of them, unfortunately, are in and out of jails. Some of them, you know, have to prostitute. But, you know, they can't find where they really fit in because, because even though they know where they are, we're still, you know, waiting for for society to catch up with us. Mm. And, you know, if we keep just, you know, ramming these points we're making down their throats, I, I, you know, I, I just wonder how that's going to work. But, now, I can understand where you're coming from there, Alana, but at the same time, I think it is important to talk about these issues because if we do want oh, society absolutely. to change, we do have to talk, at least talk about them. I would never ram the ideas down someone's throat. Oh, and no. I hope it didn't come across that way tonight. But uh, a question no, for, for clarification of what you said. We had someone call in earlier talking about their husband is a cross-dresser, but not— right. uh, and I know those people because I've helped them do that. Um, that's part of my business, and I do tours, and I do business. I'm about to be with the chamber here in the city, and they're about to get a, a real big surprise. I've been working on a book. That is kind of running in real time, and um, I think all of you guys are going to get a really kick out of it. And for you guys, I'll just make this my first my official announcement: the president and first lady, and this is going to be awesome. And and I have prayed to my God, I love God. I was raised a, a Christian, and and I'm not I'm not religious, but very spiritual. Mm-hmm. And I actually did this to get personally many years ago, so that I could fit in, and I only fit into certain clubs. So I would put on my mother's clothes and off I'd go. And um, Lord, I had those same dreams and you know prayers when I was six or seven, but that was for me was different because when my dad split at three, my mother had to go to work and I was with male babysitters because you know, she wanted me to have a male role model. So, well, you can just imagine from three until well, during Boy Scouts and church and all that, all that in there and all this and that. You know, when I was big enough to go, okay, boom, right here in the middle uh, with my knee, that's that. You know, what that's does not it have to do with the work. president and the, uh, the first lady? Oh, I the missed. president and first lady. Well, the president and first lady is the title of the book, and the book is oh, going to roll book. out. Okay. Yes, um, yeah, it's, Good luck. It's, and you know, if you want to buy some advertising, you can reach out to Mark at freetalklive.com. And I, plan, and I plan on it. All right. I absolutely Thanks plan Thanks for the on call tonight, Mark, at freetalklive.com. Your Bitcoin sale, though, is over at the moment, Mark. Yeah, ended yesterday. So We have a, a new special going, though. So. Oh, that's good. Always specials. That's good. We like that. Well, you know, and people... People like to know that there's specials going. They, they'd like to know that you're interested in selling. So, yeah, I've got one going, yeah. All right, let's uh, continue here to Uber George on the line in D.C. You're on Free Talk Live on the Amp Lines. Hey, guys. Uh, I, sorry it took so long to try to get to you. But anyway, I was started to listen to last night's show. You guys were talking about, like, the toilet paper thing and how they don't have, like, toilet paper in China. And as someone who's been to China... That's never been a problem finding toilet paper. For no, example. no, no. I didn't say chi- I didn't say China. I said I could not recall which uh, nations around the world there you you're recommended to bring your own toilet paper. Uh, I felt yeah. like it was some sort of a sort of country in that realm, but uh, I wasn't sure yeah. which one. Well, uh, well, here's one thing about China's toilets is um, you got. The one, the native ones there, you got to squat down. It's like it's not a toilet you sit in. It's, it's a toilet you stand over and squat to do your number two. Right, over there in China. What a yeah, what a that, fun that, fun thing to do. <laughs> oh, I know. And in South America, as far as toilet paper goes, and when I was in Peru, um, you cannot 
flush the toilet paper down the toilet, you got to put it in a in a waste basket next to the yeah. toilet. Thank God I don't have to clean can't... that thing out. Good Lord. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can imagine that that got us to uh, Radisson on um, the last few nights there, where it could actually handle flushing the toilet. But the first first hotel I stayed at for the first two nights, nope, I had to put it in the little trash can. I was like, wow, really? It's naturally the place yeah. started to stink. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, oh um, I'm I'm willing, to, I'm trying my best to be flexible here. I, you know, I'm a rigid guy who uh, doesn't, uh, you know, new things can kind of bother me, and I'm working my way around this whole transgendered idea. But uh, the idea of putting uh, used toilet paper in something besides the potty, yeah, I just find it unacceptable. And which country was that where where you experienced that? Oh, that was Peru. That was in some of the lower hotels in um, Lima. Uh, but um, the nice hotels, like they got Marriott's and Radisson's and stuff, and they can handle toilet paper. It's like staying in the U.S., but mm. some of the local brand ones that are not the highest end, you got to stick them there. Also in Cusco, <laughs> the city where I went to to go to Machu Picchu, uh, that place kind of like uh, – they Detroit meets San Diego. It's like a bit run down a little bit. And um, the hotel there, even though it was like a three-star thing, they said, yep, put the toilet paper in the, in the wastebasket, not wow. down the toilet. I'm just like, yeah. Good call tonight, George. <laughs> Thanks for uh, being patient. Appreciate that. Toll-free number is 855-450. Free. We have enough time for you if you call now. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at SurvivorMax.com. You're faking it. You go around pretending everything's okay. You're irritable, you lose sleep, and your mind is racing with fearful thoughts. You want it to stop. You just don't know what to do. I'm Lucinda Bassett, founder of the Midwest Center for Stress and Anxiety. I can show you how to make it stop without abusing alcohol or taking medication. I did it, and so have hundreds of thousands of people just like you. Please call now. Call now, and we'll send you this wonderful free CD. 1-800-961-4145. 1-800-961-4145. 1-800-961-4145. Genesis is defined as an origin, creation, or the beginning. Genesis Communications Network began with the mission of providing you with the kind of compelling content you're listening to now. And at GCNlive.com, you'll find a free archive of our nation's history, narrated by GCN hosts. Explore, share, and pass down to future generations. GCN is the future of talk radio, but we should always strive to learn from our past. Together, we are GCNlive.com. GCN. Hi, Coast to Coast listeners. I'm Kay Swirling from KSCO Radio in Santa Cruz. I'm 93 years old, and I'm a big fan of George Norrie because his topics and guests are fascinating and really get you thinking. George is just as bothered as I am by all the advertising you hear for toxic prescription drugs that make you sicker, not healthy. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com.
Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Dial on and toll free here. Actually, don't do it right now because we're in our final segment. We're just going to get to you if you're already on the lines. If you are not yet on the air with us tonight and you want to talk, well, we do the show seven nights a week. So there's plenty of opportunity for you to join us here on the radio waves. And, of course, you can always join us online over at freetalklive.com. And if you like the show and you want to help support Free Talk Live, then you should donate to our satellite fundraiser, the African satellite fundraiser going on now at africa.lrn.fm. LRN.fm is my little internet network that we put up on satellite and share with uh, various different listeners to whom you know we don't really even know how many of them we're reaching, but they're out there. Uh, reaching them via internet, reaching them via satellite, via broadcast radio. And we would like to expand our satellite coverage to Africa, where we've been in the past, but unfortunately we lost that signal due to the fact that we were getting it for free and the company decided they wanted to start charging us. And so I'm looking to raise the money to pay them for that airtime and reach out back to our listeners in Cameroon and Ghana and in other places, this signal of the satellite covers quite a bit of Africa. So for the few hundred bucks a month that it will cost us, or the several hundred bucks a month that it will cost, presuming we move forward with this, uh, I think it's well worth it because we're reaching people with the ideas of freedom in some of the least free places on Earth, in, one of the, in some of the least connected places on Earth. These, many of these folks don't have Internet, and or they have to travel many, many miles in order to acquire Internet. So our free-to-air satellite signal gives them a connection to ideas and information that they otherwise would not obtain. And you can help us for five, ten bucks, a hundred bucks, thousand bucks, whatever you can contribute. I sure do appreciate it. And there are perks involved. So please go to africa.lrn.fm as we go to your calls and thoughts. George is listening in Ithaca, New York, to WNYY. Hello, George. Hi, hey guys. Um, always looking look forward to Saturday night when we get all three hours. Thanks. Um, yeah, um, uh, Jennifer's uh, Christian heart may go out to transgender individuals, but um, I think she may be overlooking um, one of the first tenets of Christianity, that being free will. Uh, if someone does want to transgender, then it's within their purview and uh permission of the creator to do so. I mean, that's what it's all about. We can't change God's uh, will ultimately, but that's the whole point of having free will, is to know that we're not being controlled, that we do with our lives as we should or can and will. And uh, that's why I've kind of gone to a Christian spiritualist of sorts, in, in that Christianity is becoming something other than what I knew it to be as a child. Yeah, I would think that if Jesus was really concerned about this issue, that he would have uh, spent a little time talking about it. Mm. Um, but it doesn't seem like he addressed it at all. Um, I mean, the Bible's got a lot of words in it that aren't Jesus's, and I... Uh, I find that, like, I remember the red letter edition Bible, and to me that meant that, uh, you know, God's words were more important than man's words. And I've, you know, I think that Jesus yeah. addressed this, if uh, if that was—and by the way, I have to take 
other people's words for it because Jesus didn't bother writing anything down. But no, you know, this is a third century document at best. And right, now it's a third century King document. Version, right, um, hundreds of years after Christ's uh, crucifixion. Yep. Good call. So, good uh, thoughts tonight, George. Thanks for making it. I do appreciate it. Let's go to Live Wire, listening in New Orleans. To WGSO. Hey, Live Wire. Hey, uh, I wanted to explain why Hillary will not win the presidential election. Oh, that's a, quite a prediction. Well, wait, wait, wait. Before you go on, you mean the primary or the actual general election? The, 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 well, if she gets past all the other Democrats, which apparently she would, she won't win the general election. Why? I believe why that uh, Vermin Supreme is running against her, and I will be. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to support Vermin Supreme. I want to hear why. Go ahead. Well, I'm sorry, who is Vermin Supreme? Uh, the Bush? The other Bush? No, he's the guy with the rubber <laughs> boot on his head. Have you seen oh, him uh, okay, sprinkle okay. glitter on the other candidates? Uh, not yet, but he I'll, has I'll, promised I'll have to look for every it. American a free pony if he gets elected. I love Vermin Supreme. He's been on our show. He's really one of the only politicians I'm willing to talk the to. The only one I can take seriously. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, go ahead with your prediction, Livewire. What's the reason Hillary will not win in 2016? The, the, the reason. The, the reasons are about three sentences. She is a habitually lying communist who does not care about whom she murderously allows to be railroaded, such as the Benghazi affair and an ambassador that was killed, and she knew all about it, and she's lying about that stuff. And most importantly, because she is a Satan-worshipping scum sucker. Satan-worshipping? Satan-worshipping. Is it, is it just hyperbolic when you say um, Satan-worshipper, or do you really, really think that she is a Satan-worshipper? Hello? Wow. Livewire? Did we lose him? Oh, well. Stand by. Stand by, Livewire. Apparently he dropped off the line or something, even though his line's still showing, so I don't understand. But anyway, let's bring uh, David on. David in uh, Columbus. David in Columbus. Going once. David yes, in... sir. Thank you for taking my... Yes, yes, sir. Thank you for taking my call. Go, I appreciate sir. It. You are on the radio. Yes, sir. Um, I wanted to make a comment about transgenderism. Um... I, I am a professing Christian, but I do like to, to take a look at things not through just that lens and, and try to keep an open view to things. And and the, the, when the Bible talks about uh, you know homosexuality or trans or not specifically transgenderism, it talks about things being unnatural. Yeah. And so then we we, we get to the point of of the genitalia of the male and female and what they were actually made for, because you know you you could get into animals, you could get into holes in trees, you could get into a lot of different aspects of of why they were made but science tells us outside the bible why why the male genitalia was made in the female genitalia because when the sperm meets the egg that's when you have life that's that's it's the form of reproduction now you can use those things you know that the, the the female genitalia or the male genitalia for other things but that is unnatural that is what the bible speaks of being unnatural so so I just want to make well, that Well, that's distinction. your opinion, right? I mean, that, that it's your opinion that it's unnatural, but by all evidence, being gay is pretty natural because, well, it happens in nature, and uh, every gay person well, I've ever known has— It's the, it's the well, point of reproduction that human life continues to exist. If you put homosexuals on What's the on point island, of disease? They would die off. So? They would die off. Well, yeah, uh, that, that, that's, that's that, that that assumes that you know what a homosexual is. I, I, I spoke earlier about the Kinsey scale, and the Kinsey scale talks about sexuality um, uh, being a spectrum as opposed to being just on or off, gay or straight or whatever. And it's not that. So it, you can't just take homosexuals on an island and put them out there and expect them to uh, not breed because they will. Because, you know, what's a homosexual? S sometimes they're attracted to both uh, sexes and those sorts of things. Um, no, but they can't breed. They, they can't breed because they're... There's no females there. They're not. That's not, that's not who they breed with. So there they would are die. If female <laughs> homosexuals too. Here's a little news for you. Um, so they could be put on the island too. If you're saying just a bunch of male homosexuals. They, 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 they can't right. have babies. Okay, so that's let me address your particular issue. What you said is, is that the penis is for one thing, that is distributing semen into a vagina and therefore making a baby. And I think that's fine. You can use your penis for that, but you use it for lots of other things too. In the same way that I can scratch my eyebrow and I can wield a sword, I can pull the trigger on a gun and I can write with a pencil and I can use my hands for lots of different things i can use my penis for lots of different things too so it is a fast i can i can pee with it i can it's a it's an upgrade pee, peeing technology that i am very <laughs> pleased with um and i can uh, you know do all kinds of things with it so i don't think that it 
that your particular like it's unnatural because it's for breeding thing. Yeah, I mean to suggest necessarily that holds being, water. To, to suggest that being gay is unnatural to me means that you really uh, that that you just. That you don't that that means to me that you think that every gay person has chosen this for themselves, right? And is that what no, you believe? No, what I'm saying is that I know, what I believe is that science tells us. Now let's take let's take religion and everything aside. Science tells us what the point of of the male and the female genitalia is for reproduction purposes. That is what is natural. That's your opinion, but I don't want to have a baby. People so. have sex for pleasure all the time. Science yeah. tells us that uh, that females and males across species have Dolphins, sex for pleasure. In fact, have, have uh, sex for pleasure. Do that as well. Thanks, David. I appreciate your call and thoughts tonight. Uh, let's continue with Dana in Grand Rapids. Listening ah, to WTKG. Dana, Hi, I'm Dana. surprised I haven't heard from you. Hi, guys. Um, well, I, I just want to call to straighten something out. Um, uh, two Do points I want to make. Two real quick points. I know you're short. Um, uh, the first thing is a lot of people are talking about this gym. This actually happened at Planet Fitness in Midland, Michigan. Mm. And so it was widely discussed in our state. What people are not saying to you is the man was openly walking around. He He wasn't using any kind of discernment or, you know, any regard for others. But That's going to be a real problem. problem was. It yeah, was a man walking around in the was. women's locker room? Yeah, completely naked. And, <laughs> um, and, um, and, but he said he ID'd. He didn't look female anywhere else. Well, you know he didn't have a weapon on him, at least. Hey, thanks for the call tonight, Dana. I appreciate it. We're out of time, but we'll be back tomorrow night online. In the meantime, actually, I won't be back tomorrow. Mark, you'll be here with Christopher Cantwell. Is that so? On yep, Sunday. Leaving night. me alone. All right. Uh, so I'll be on Neocash Radio tomorrow night, which is JJ, our former uh, talk show host, former co-host. He's got his own show. It'll be my first time on his show. So anyway, you, you can't watch that live anyway, so just look for that later. We'll see you tomorrow at freetalklive.com. Are you- Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, April 18th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.27 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,205 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $223. Antiwar.com reports the purge of Palestinian civilians during the founding of Israel.